everybody, I'm TJ Majors, and welcome to the special Christmas episode. Brett Griffin, I usually uh, come in here and grab two waters, and today I got handed you a three beast. different kinds of, of drinks. I got a <laughs> Monster Beast Unleashed, a uh, Mick Ultra, which is my kind of go-to, and I'm going to drink a lot. And what's this black thing, Tyler? Yeah, it's Beast Unleashed Original. This mean one, green. The white one is the uh, white You're haze that everywhere. I'm spilling. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, Tyler I'm, has I've destroyed our drinks. Yeah. Yeah. I've knocked the wreath over. He's had two spills uh, and a crash. <laughs> We just got here, Freddie. <laughs> hey, what's up? Freddie Kraft, Spotify, Bubba Wallace, and I don't know who else now. Um, <laughs> That's good. That is that trouble. Is really good. Yeah. It's six percent. What I recommend is he getting, said don't what shotgun I recommend it. is getting really drunk and trying to shotgun one. Because yeah. I seen somebody do that one time and yeah. then we, what had happened? A, we had to pour him into a car and drive him home. Yeah. Um That's no names mentioned. Guy. Tyler, welcome to the show. Hey, what's up? <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas. I figured uh, we'd bring some beast and Thanks. throw beast over it down. There? Look, she's cracking a beast. Look. TJ's not partaking. He's got to go be a dad. I have, it's uh, yeah, school, I have some right? school functions to go to TJ, a bit. you can have You'd one probably, drink. I got one. I'll try. I'll wait till you know, I don't want it to be gone. Oh, TJ, my gosh. even I'm drinking here. I'll give a, <laughs> what, um, <laughs> you'd probably Which have a lot better? more fun. Everybody but you is drinking here. Which TJ? one's better? You say that one's pretty good? Well, he this didn't try that one. Uh, uh, Tyler said the original is pretty good. So. Well, I mean, mine. Just, that is good. Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, for, it, for you, like, like yeah, I, we're going to go. With it. When I'm asked that question, I feel like the, my go to is like, you know, the white haze is like the white monster, you know, the original. The white, the green. white monster is pretty good. The mean green is like the original. So, so you know, if you I just kind of go in my for what you like. in my house and my kids think it's a normal monster and they are like really happy for Christmas, that absolutely that, tastes that like a normal not. monster, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Well, good news is it's only 6% alcohol. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to keep it in my beer fridge just to make sure we don't have any accidents. That's actually pretty good. Yeah. Hey, Casey. Oh, hey. Casey, How you want you? a beast? I can see Casey again, guys. I'm so pumped about it. Casey, I Casey, like Casey and shirt. Andrew. I like your shirt. Andrew, you like thank you for scheduling this Christmas episode. Although, we didn't schedule the dinner that I think Freddie owes us. Oh, yeah. We do need your dinner. I'm buying two steaks since so. I missed last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you guys need, need a ride, I, I know a guy. You can, you can oh, set yeah, all up. Tyler would like to attend, and he already has a car service for yeah, us, I think so. Tyler's like grandfathered into it. Yeah, he, he is. He is. Um, anyways, how's <laughs> y'all's off season going so far? It's good. I actually <laughs> took an off season this year so far. I've only yeah, done I mean, one. I've only done one race. Mine was terrible until Freddie went on vacation. I saw pictures <laughs> of him on a beach. That was. Terrible. <laughs> I didn't get harpooned. That was a good start to the, to the vacation. Where, where exactly is Belize at? Belize is Navidad, like oh, that, yeah, Belize, Belize. I don't know where <laughs> it is. Don't stop <laughs> so Belize. <stupid>. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. It's like the the bottom of Mexico is the best way I could describe it. Oh, I thought it was its own country. So it's in Mexico. no, no. It's its own country, but it's the tip of like the bottom, like <laughs> you south said of a Mexico. Lot of words. This is a great geography. I have no <laughs> idea where the <laughs> f- it is. You know how it is? You take a plane there from Dallas, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie got yeah, on a plane. To Texas first. Yeah, Brett, there was only, that's the only time I. Yeah, he got to say Dallas, connected. Texas. So we knew where it was. Got on the plane until he got to the tip, and then he got oh. off and uh, yeah, get off the tip. Um, <laughs> damn. Start but it was it was fun. Here. It was it was so a it was good near time. Hawaii. Yeah, just n- right next door to Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, it's got probably close. 10, 12 hours right away. Hot. You had to be hot. That's warm. It was hot down there. It was pretty warm. It's close to the equator. Is that the place with the pigs? No, that's Exumas. Oh yeah. Uh, we, I really, chickens, we didn't right? really see any. Had, no, that was like there was really no. I seen some iguanas and shit. we saw a crocodile, which was a little terrifying because we were, on a, a, we were on a washed out road <laughs> driving somewhere and there's a there's a be- croc just hanging out over here to the right really? and I was like, you didn't yeah, throw a rock. Hopefully at this anything? golf cart don't break down because we were driving the first two <clears> days rain like hell. So we had this really good idea. Somebody told us there's a place called Secret Beach, which if you ever been to Belize, you got to go. Or if you're going to Belize, that sounds go like there. a place where you go to get. Where you stay there <laughs> yeah. and you don't come back. So uh, somebody's like, you got to go. So we had the bright idea. We're going to go. They said it's two miles from your resort. And we have everything's golf carts. You drive around golf carts. And I was like, all right, that's not bad. Two miles. I don't know who measured that. But that must have been some kind of Belizean uh, measurement. It must uh, have been two miles like straight across, Yeah, like right? we're thinking like it must be like as the bird flies. Uh, but, yeah, so we, we got drenched, probably ruined a couple golf carts. It was... Uh, Secret sunshine beach. sunshine was knee deep in a pond and a puddle trying to push Wyndham's golf cart that, out. That, and there's crocodiles. Yeah, so there's that, crocodiles around there. So, yeah. I mean, it was. It and was, surely there's no alcohol involved, right? No, there was none that yeah. day. We were just tip top shape. Um, did you catch any fish? But, uh, you were fishing at one we point. We did catch a bunch of fish. Yeah, we caught a bunch. They were. I, I'm not uh, the water sports king of the world by no, any no means, kid. believe it or not. Like, water, water sports. You, you, you look like fish. a water skier. <laughs> you look like a wake surfer. Believe it yeah. or not, me and Michael Phelps don't hang out on the weekends. <laughs> 
Um, but they went down. Uh, all of them could do it. They they went down and speared lobster, which I thought was really cool. I got in there and watched them do it. So I was why not, didn't you drive? I was not you diving. Didn't go down there I'm too buoyant. My fat ass can't get under the he water. He was the buoy. <laughs> So they did that. We caught some. Uh, Could you imagine Freddy floating on top of the water like a cork <laughs> with, with, with these guys tied to him and they go down to Spears Level and he's like. <laughs> they can't see you. It's a podcast. Don't they? <laughs> They're envisioning you with swimmies on trying to hold everybody up. There's no swimmies. I, was, I just had some fins rolling. They're all looking at Freddy. Um, uh, he's up no, there. Don't worry. You can visualize it on Dirt Vision. Oh, yeah. It comes yeah. out. So. Oh, yeah. Um, Feel free but to do it anyway, again, Brian. It was good. We had a long time. Uh, I hope somebody draws a cartoon of you underwater spearing a <laughs> spearing a <laughs> spearing a lobster. Anything you can Tyler, find. what have you been doing? Have you been spearing lobster? Uh as soon as the season got over, we uh a friend of mine, Greg Stumpf, uh got married. He's, you know, guy that started off X Paint, uh paints a lot of helmets. So we went down to St. Thomas. I've been down there in the past, like on cruise ships and stuff, but we went and stayed down there. Uh he got hey, don't married. Don't you think it's way better to just go stay? Man, I, I don't know. I really liked cruise ships. Yeah. I mean, I enjoyed I enjoyed my time there. Um, we we stayed at I think they stayed at the uh, the wedding was at the Ritz Carlton and St. Thomas, and I was like, okay, until I saw the bill, and I was like, I'm not doing that again. It was, <laughs> it was expensive. It's fancy, but uh, it was nice. Like you could you could walk down out of your room, and there was like a serve yourself bar, which is dangerous, right? Just walk up, pour <laughs> whatever you want, you want you and want. leave. I think literally. Uh, the, on, on the wedding day, I walked down there and they had like a uh, uh, bottle of of tequila sitting there, and uh, all the all the guys wanted to loosen up a little bit. I just pretty much emptied the bottle into a couple cups and walked out of there and didn't say anything. So <laughs> I that, that kind of made up the cost a little I bit. I did that but. at a Gwen Stefani concert one time. <laughs> oh yeah, remember uh, the Boris <laughs> wedding deal? Who 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 was it that got tore up before their wedding? Dickerson. Jeff Dickerson. Yeah, that's right. That's a, that's <laughs> a wedding to, story. He <laughs> had to get remarried the next day because his wife was yeah. so mad. Mm. We no, it wasn't like on. that. It, it, went, it, was, yeah. it was night. I mean, it was he's like a, 30 He's people. a very good friend of the spotters these days. We could probably we get him We should probably here. have Dickerson on here. <laughs> we should. Yeah, it was, uh, like, like you said, right, it was warm. It was like 80 the entire time we were there, night, day. That's awesome. It's really pretty. And then you had a blast in Nashville, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, one thing about St. Thomas that I want to talk about that was just wild, right? Um those that have been there know about it, right? But everyone drives like U.S. domestic cars over there, but everyone drives on the left-hand side of the road in left-hand drive cars. That's sketchy. That's a little sketchy. Yeah, and the roads are about <laughs> as wide as this table. <laughs> yeah. And they're windy, hilly roads, and you're just like, how do people just not pile up, just hit each other I, head on all yeah. the time down here? The sketchiest here? part of my trip to uh, Belize was they said, we're going to do the chicken drop tonight. And I'm like, I don't know what the f- chicken drop is, but I'm in. Whatever. I thought we were going to dinner. Um, maybe it ends up. Dinner. Maybe it ends up being dinner. So <laughs> we go to this place. I uh, I think it's Wahoo's or something like that. Maybe a and tri- chicken drop at Wahoo's, Freddie. So, that sounds really so, like a good spot. So we go back there, and I look at. We walk out on the beach, and they've got this grid with numbers one through a hundred. You go over to this lady, you buy a ticket, and it's, it gives you the number one through a hundred. And next thing you know, the guy, there's a DJ going nuts, and the DJ's like, security, bring me my f***ing chicken. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, now here comes a guy dancing with a chicken through the crowd, <laughs> and he hands it off to a, another, like a bar, you know, somebody that's at the bar hanging out. The chicken handler. Yeah, and the guy goes, all right, you know, the guy tells a story about where he's from, what he's doing on vacation. So the guy goes, okay, here you can do, now you got to take the chicken. So the guy hands him the chicken. <laughs> he's like, you got to spin it around three times, go up and down with it three times. Left and right with the three. And at this point, I still have no idea what the is going on. And then he goes, and then you blow in the chicken's ass and throw him on the grid. And then, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Blow? So the guy, lift, the, the <laughs> DJ lifts the thing's tail feather up. The guy blows in his ass, puts the thing down, they throw it on this grid. And then wherever the chicken is, is the number of the winner. <laughs> there's, like a, there's like a grid of numbers yeah, it's on a the grid ground. Of numbers. The yeah, it's like whatever, the whatever box the chicken is in. That's the so winner. That's the winner. Yeah, bingo. Would, yeah, it's like chicken Bingo. I would have to imagine the guy that has to blow in the chicken's ass makes a lot of money out of the deal. No, he's a he's. Our I vacation. could have done it. Like it's just somebody there hanging out. I'm glad it's you not. Didn't. It's not. We were trying to get Tyler. To I it. know where you're going after spot. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I was like, they bring this thing out. They had told us like, oh, he's shits, whatever. And I'm like, next thing you know, this guy's flipping this thing around his head and up and down. And <laughs> Ten years from All now. Right, now blow in the butt. I'm like, what? And guy, like he's really standing right. I got a good video of it. Ten years from now, that DJ gonna be Freddie. Bring me the chicken. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was like, it was that was fun though. Is it something like you bet money on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it costs you, you like yeah, two you or buy three the dollars ticket. a ticket. Yeah, and then it's you, the winner takes all. So it's like two hundred bucks. I think one was five hundred bucks. <laughs> like so, you just win whatever you want. That's they, have, uh, they have one like every half hour. They do a chicken drop. So if you're in Belize, wow. go to the chicken drop. I don't know what the bar was. I think it's Wahoo. There's a uh, there's a guy that lives in Belize that used to work at Junior Motorsports. You know, remember Phil Somebody Edgar? Told me that. <clears throat> Phil Stephen told me that actually. Yeah, he used to work here and he got done here and he just went there and now he's a. I don't. Even, I think he takes care of a rental property or something there. It's, it was nice. But what have you guys been up? To? What have you been doing? I, I don't think I've been doing anything after listening to you guys. I mean, St. <laughs> Thomas and Nashville and. Uh, I'm Everywhere sure you went to Belize. Columbia at some point. I did go to Columbia for uh, for Se- a game. Secret Beach there? For two games, <laughs> actually. Um, yeah, we, we won one, lost one. But, no, I mean, I've had fun. It's been a quiet, quiet. Listen, I got three kids. When you got three <clears> kids that are in school, it, I'm waiting for Christmas, and they'll get busy from there. So, TJ knows the deal. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's a handful. But we, I mean, I've been pretty, it's been pretty quiet. Went to my parents' house for Thanksgiving and went to a Bills game. Where they beat the Jets. So that, that the one was he lot. invited us to, but then didn't really invite <coughs> us? Yeah, once the game was getting ready to start. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> that would have been a good one to go to. Because they, they literally, it was, it was rowdy that day. And they beat the Jets pretty bad, so that was even better. We, uh, I went in really early and got to see, you know, uh, honestly, <clears throat> the access that you have early if you go into the stadium. It, it, like, the players are all really out there. And you can, like, there's, Stephon there's Diggs played. Logano <clears throat> know that? I don't know. He's probably never been to a Bills game, but... Uh, Stefan Diggs played catch with fans for like an hour. So any Joey Logano like, said our fans are spoiled. It sounds like you're a spoiled football fan. I must be a spoiled <laughs> football fan. But I, that's the lowest that I've ever sat. And <clears throat> I sat 10 rows up behind the Bills bench. And you kind of get spoiled because you can actually hear the conversation. Oh, he admitted it. He's, oh, yeah. no. He's spoiled too. <laughs> I, well, from normal seats where I always sat before, like you could actually tell a lot more what's going on. If you're into football, like if you're – like I'm into football quite a bit, so I like it's. It was cool to be hear the conversations and see them come off there, and, and see the interaction between the players and and guys like Stefan Diggs is an unreal character and team builder guy. He is up and down that bench talking to every single guy, motivator completely. So I uh, have a whole. Not, I thought he was before, but I have a whole new impression of him right now. Just what he is as a as a teammate. Um, but no, it was fun. Then um, <clears throat> did that had Thanksgiving and. Come back, my youngest Stella broke her arm, so that that was a little bit of a. She didn't break her arm; she broke her elbow. Elbow, that yeah. sounds worse. I, I don't that know. Sounds it, way worse. <clears throat> yeah, it's not fun when little ones <clears throat> break their arms, and but she's in a cast now, and she she gets it off on the 18th, so that's good. And off before Christmas, Kelsey, you jump, Kelsey. Who the f- Kelsey? Kelsey. Who the hell Casey, Kelsey? Did you ju- did you junk any airplanes since uh, Phoenix? <laughs> oh, like, man, I, like, uh, I have been, I've bad. been on a lot of airplanes, and I'm really sorry to whoever was on my flight from Fort Lauderdale to Charlotte uh, after Thanksgiving because that was all Chloe. But yes, uh, I can say all the other flights were. How was your trip Phoenix. to California? Did you go to a bunch of vineyards? Oh yes, uh, a, a lot of wine was had there. I guess there was a race too. I Chris, Chris is really pumped that there's. I think they rained out one day, like pretty yeah. early, and he was he he got to tag along. To he was our the, photographer. Yeah, it he, worked out really. He well. seemed like he was really <coughs> happy about that. Yes, uh, <coughs> Placerville, California. If you ever get a chance to go out there, especially for that Usac race, I mean, you there's nothing better. Wineries. Larson racing. win that race. He yeah, did. He, I think he, he, won. he won like everything out there. He didn't swept he? it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then Florida, and then I'm, so, <laughs> I'm surprised. <laughs> wow. And then Nashville, which was. I feel like we just, right. yeah, yeah, you know, they always, I don't know. I love Nashville. They always do a great job there. <coughs> they, uh, there's a lot of fun to be had in Nashville. Yeah, a lot of parties, a lot of open bars. That usually works out good. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. <laughs> yeah, open bars. <laughs> Freddie nice. Freddie kept racing you know, for the, a while. They, they bring around food to you, too, but for whatever reason, it's just when you go to those things, you're like, eh, no, I don't need I think that's <laughs> where Tyler and I schemed, like, what dinner is going to be like. We're going, we're planning on, like, the most expensive steak restaurant. That's because fine. it's on you this year, That's and fine. I can skip it. Just like I'm, TJ did last year. I want to go to that see, steak forty all the conversation. Steak forty eight. So. You yeah. can't skip it if you're you're the guy that pays. Yes, so. I can. Because <laughs> I skipped it, and I was the guy that won. <laughs> <laughs> we'll save the bill. <laughs> um, Freddie didn't quit racing until like five. I did run two races. <laughs> I ran two races the, like the first two weeks off, but then then I quit. Yeah, I didn't go to snowball this year. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, that's right. You didn't do the snowball. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I went right. to Southern National and watched a great late mile race. 
Did you go? Oh, it was entertaining. Did you Soon. go to, uh, what do you call it with Dale? Oh, are you going to go? You no, didn't go. I wasn't You were the one yelling at the kid. That was Joey. No, yeah. I get a tweet during the, there's a race. Dale ran, what was it, the South Carolina 400? Yeah. It was a good South race. South Carolina 400, that was only 250 laps. I don't know. Um, but so, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Dale, I don't know. He must have got into it with some kid, like a young kid or something. <clears throat> and there's a tweet that was yeah. like, that kid needs to learn his lesson or some shit. And I'm like, here we go. TJ's yeah. beating me and the children again. Oh, yeah. Freddie, I'm like, like hey, man, I, I'm not there. You know that, right? <laughs> and uh, that's the same kid that um, the kid's good for. I mean, he's young, like really young. But Who he, is it? I, don't even I know. think it's Tristan McKee. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So he was there the first race that I did for Dell Jr. down there, and he was fast. But he, he one would of the like ones you spun <clears> out the first race. No, he's one of the ones that was he'd get to you, and everyone's saving tires, but he'd get to you. He ran into like five or six cars straight, and when I when we got to us, I told Dell Jr. the I'm like, hey, this kid's just running everywhere. I said he moved up and let him go, but the kid ended up wrecking on the front stretch really hard. But he just needs to drive at a nine out of ten instead of a fifteen out of ten, and he'll 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 figure we'll out. Get, he's young. We'll though. get to it later, but my wooden <clears> of the year came from that race. Dude, no. You if you went to Southern National, you might have a new water. Oh, really? Oh, I saw you didn't fight, but I was. I think I was on vacation. Should I, I go through what? Did you see any of that? So <clears throat> we get there. Me and Brad drive up there on that Sunday, and we're sitting in the stands right across from uh, where this all this stuff starts. The guy leading the race or running second gets run over um, by the guy in third. And, I mean, he just runs over him and wrecks him. Well, the guy gets out of the car. He's walking back down the pit road area. Well, the guy that wrecked him is coming down pit road. Where the wreck, he tore up his own car too. And I'm like, this isn't probably. I mean, they're gonna meet. So <clears throat> he goes up to the the dry, the passenger side of the car and reaches inside, and he's like, then he starts grabbing wires. <clears throat> so good move. I like. Yeah, that. and that that and resourceful. There was um the, then there was guys getting in the driver, getting put in headlocks, and I did see a girl get her hair pulled, but it ended up being from her sister. Was trying that to, at the track? <clears throat> oh, that was oh. right during that time. Yeah, <laughs> her own sister pulled her. <laughs> yeah, hair. trying to get her out of there. Um, <clears throat> Oh, because she nice. was, uh, she I guess she has a really short fuse, and she's and her sister saw it, it was a good good sister move. Um, good sister, move. <clears throat> but so that's not the end of it. We go down, we cross the track after that race, and we're talking to people and seeing a lot of old friends there. Um, and we're getting ready to cross back before the the late mile race, and the guy, um, the guy wrecked <laughs> in the limited race is racing the late mile race for another team. Well. The dad of the kid that wrecked him walks up to that car. I mean, the drivers are in the cars. He reaches in the side of the car and starts ripping wires out of that car. <laughs> <clears throat> so another fight breaks out, and there is uh, – it's it sounds like uh, a shit show. I, yeah, I mean, uh, we're standing there like, Whoosh, what is going on here? Um, so we they end up delaying the race or slowing it down to get the, let them fix that car real quick. And, and then uh, the race ended up being really good. Josh and Butterbean and, and Caden – put on a really good show so one of the best probably one of the best if not the best late mile race that i've witnessed in person with them guys i mean they were they swapped the lead the last probably five six laps in a row the lead swapped every single lap twice a lap yeah so, i've seen a video that we were posted or, or race america posted that was 25 laps of them just kind of going. dude it that. was unreal josh ran him down and mm -hmm. he was really polite in the beginning and then he moved him a little bit and as soon as that that as soon as he touched him a little bit it was like okay as soon as you get from him moving you then they just took turns i mean they were doing the whole thing where you lift before the corner entry to keep the guy pinned on the outside so he can't turn out and cross you over they were doing like like a lot of a lot of great short track moves, and it, nobody wrecked it. It was clean as could be. I mean, they were, it was rough, but, I mean, it was like <clears throat> I that whole place was on their feet. That's good. Well, let's start off with a pretty hot topic because I feel like, Freddie, Brett, you've tweeted You like about that it. store? Huh? What in the world? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. I used to shop there a lot. When I, uh, your I, I haven't had breakfast up. today. This thing's really strong. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. You're getting get lightheaded. Me and you, me and you both. I ain't eat either. I ain't eating either because I was smarter than you, you guys. You are gonna be a lot of fun today. Uh, <laughs> this tastes just like a regular monster. What? Um, like what just some, like it. Do we need to start highlighting some spotter changes? Because I feel like they're changing more than the drivers. Spotters are, are changing. Spotters are changing. <laughs> Listen, I don't. I, uh, Freddie may have Salary's the whole list. Changing. Salaries <laughs> doubling. Holla. Get you some Is of that. Is that for you guys too? No, because I'm unemployed. Um, <laughs> hey, hey, listen, um, anytime the sport takes its most popular driver, Chase Elliott, and its champion, Ryan Blaney, and key members, I call us offensive coordinators for all you football fans out there, nothing is more important when the race starts than the driver. Second most important thing is the crew chief making the car better. Third most important thing once you take the green, in my mind, is the spotter because he's obviously the eyes and ears. When you have changes, Tyler, 
at that level. I mean, I didn't expect to see Chase Elliott and Ryan Blaney change spotters. Did you? Yeah, no. Um, yeah, hearing that was very interesting. But, you know, I, I recently went through a change, right? Um, you know, parting ways with Derek as I came over 2311 and picking up Nick Payne. So um, with the younger guys, like someone like Nick that lives here, right, it, it made that transition pretty easy because we were able to spend a lot of time together during the week to get up to speed. And um, everything's a little different, right? Everyone's experience on the roof is probably at a little bit different place. Like, like Eddie and Josh have a lot of experience on the roof, so they may not need to spend, you know, everyone's different, right? What they need is different depending on the driver. So, but to see, you know, guys that have worked with the spotter, um, you know, that long and then just switch it up. I mean, there's, there's a learning curve to that for sure. You know, you got to get used to it. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that works out. Cause I mean, we go to the clash and we go right to the biggest race of the year, 500. So and and what's different page. this year, I think, about most years is not only do we go to the 500, we go to Atlanta week two. So you're starting off yeah. back-to-back um, plate races, which we uh, – Ryan Blanchard is a kid. He's going to go spot for um, – John Hunter, yep. he was a third spotter. He's somebody I know from the modified ranks, and then we, we got him a job at 2311, and, and yeah, he was, was Tyler's third that. spotter. But happy uh, for him at the yeah. same time, right? Like yeah. that's, that's, that's what you want to do when you <clears throat> bring on these guys to do the second or third at the road courses, right? The, the hope, if they're trying to pursue it, you know, as a, as a full-time job or as a, you know, career opportunity, you want to give them the experience and, and hopefully put them in that position to be able to go get that full-time job, right? Like we've had – Greg Stump, I talked about him earlier. He does it kind of for fun. He's not necessarily looking for that as as a job, right? He's already got his hands full painting helmets. But it's cool to see that for for Ryan because I thought he did a really good job um, in the role that he had. So for him to boom get get thrown into it and get to go cup racing is is exciting. Yeah, we're we're a breeding ground for cup spotters in twenty three eleven because yeah. Nick Nick that spotter for right. Tyler this year was my second spotter for Bubba two years ago. Then Blanchard's going up. I think my second spotter may be getting a cup job this year. Brent Wentz. Um, so that'd be cool. Um, but in all, I have right now 13 spotter changes. Joel would call it poaching season. Poaching yeah. season. <clears throat> so Road David courses Keith, are poaching David season. Keith, God rest his soul, would call it ninja season. Ninja season, <laughs> for sure. What is the reason now? Money, 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 money. Where is money. this money coming from? <laughs> uh, it's come, like the, we talked about earlier in the year, Spire made it a point to go out and, and get talented spotters. You know, they felt like, uh, to Brett's point, they felt like there's three people really in control of things on Sundays, which the the driver, the crew chief, and the spotter. So they were willing to go out and get talented drivers, the best crew chiefs they can get, and the best spotters they can get. And with them doing that and offering guys, large, Brett said double. But, but let's be honest, when, when you look at it from a business perspective, yes, it is a lot more money. In, in our world as spotters, but for a billionaire-ish team owner oh, yeah. to, to upgrade your spotter for $50,000, we're not talking about a lot of money. Yeah, and and what that did was, what the, what's the sweet, like uh, rising tides raises all ships. Like now guys were threat guys that didn't have contracts were saying, okay, well, I'm going to go to Spire unless you, Matt, you know, their Spire was making these offers and guys that were, were out of contract would go, I, I'm going to go over there if you can't match it. All right, now we're going to match it. So then – in turn, now it's raising the salary of all the guys that are staying where they're at. And then, obviously, some guys you see Josh is leaving. There's another guy leaving Penske. Uh, Harrison Spotter Tyler's leaving. I think with those two, though, it's really important to say Tyler Green spotted for Carson Osovar and Trucks, longstanding relationship. Josh Williams, longstanding relationship with Zane Smith. Yeah, they built these. These are they've built, This isn't just like a one. Yeah. This has been sure. building. Years, years, yeah. years of working together. But to your point, it certainly helps the market. Yeah, for sure. I mean, other guys, you know, you see, we've seen Fedua is going to go spot for Blaney now. Um, so that opens the four car up. I, don't I know. mean, there, but there was a lot of things to the background of that for in order for, you know, there was things hinging on each other for yeah. the for Josh to be able to go and for Timmy to be able to go and over there. And they just got cleared <clears> up. Like, yeah. When Josh made that announcement. So that was two yeah. days ago, three days ago. Did you ask Brad for more money yet? Not yet. <laughs> this, I, I'm listen, still under contract. I wonder how that so. conversation This motherfucker. <laughs> spotted for the richest, most popular driver yeah. in NASCAR history, and making was, making middle of the market. Yeah, so no, that, that is actually true. <laughs> That's actually very true. He got gift cards. I always <laughs> shot for the top, <laughs> regardless of performance. My fat ass shot for the top of the market. TJ was fine living in the middle. I got bills. I got kids. I, I got Bill. I got Brett. I got to hang out with. So I got to get more money. Yeah, that's that's also it, a lot of this is timing though too. Like when when like Freddie said, when your contract's up, you know, it, it's hard to go. 
honestly, I mean, Freddie had another year, right? The, and that same, hard. <clears throat> same thing here. Like, I'm not – like, if they want to – I mean, you don't want to go in there and rock the boat. You know your time's coming, and it I'll seems to go up. Well, I'll we know that. for you. You want me to call Newmark for you? No, absolutely not. <laughs> I, 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 I can be my own agent. Here's where some of these. That. Here's I feel like I kind of had to rock the boat as well. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, H- to that. H- cheers, cheers to rock and boats, Tyler. <laughs> Here, here's where these guys screw up. They think they're going to go in there in numbers. Let's three or four of us walk in there together and talk to a general manager and get more money. No, you idiots. Do you not realize how business works? This is where these guys are spotters yeah. and not business people. I think that wh- I heard one team that I was talking to one of the spotters, and one team's like, well, if we do that for you, we got to do it for everybody. And I'm like, no, you don't. If they don't come in here and ask for it, you don't got to do it. Like, if, yeah. if, <clears throat> if, if I go in there and ask for this X amount of raise, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm, g- I'm not negotiating for me and Nick, my teammate. You know, I'm negotiating for me. If Nick wants to come in here and go, yeah, I want the same as Freddie, more power <clears throat> to him. But, yeah. you know, I'm not worried about what everybody else is doing. I'm worried about what Freddie's doing. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're still – and, Tyler, I, I, I would love to hear your perspective on this because, obviously, I knew Elliot Sadler, worked with him like a brother to me, a, a family member to me forever. Clint Boyer, same way. Jeff Burton I knew for a long time before I spotted for him. But the relationship is so important. And to your point, I spent every waking moment with Elliot during the week on airplanes and buses and freaking appearances because I was his business manager too. He made me a better spotter. How much better did you see Nick get this year because of you? I mean – I mean, we spent time together, but I was, um, I got to be honest, like I saw a lot of that, um, that drive just come from himself. You know, he was really motivated. Uh, that was something that really excited me in the beginning um, when we were, you know, me and Billy sat down to talk to him about getting paired up together and working together is I could just, I, in the conversations we had, if you will, in our interview, right, like I could just tell he had the similar drive and, and like as a driver, I have drive and I look at things and you know, this is how I want to improve, right? If you would take that and put that in a spotter's position, like the things that he's focusing on, working on, paying attention to, he was doing all that, and he was focusing on all of that. All of that. So He likes Rolexes, too, so you got to like money if you like Rolexes, right? <laughs> I, Speaking so of needing a raise. I think, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, you know, like like Bubba is, you know, I, I, I what would you call it like a, a – uh, of, I don't know what There's a lot of names I'd call habit, Bubba. I gotta be honest. <laughs> like he, Bubba loves Rolex a vice, watches. A vice, a vice, yeah. a vice for Bubba. And yeah. um, somehow, you know, Nick, you know, I think I don't know. Did he have one? I don't know if he did before the year started. Oh, I, I know he's I, got I one now. Check in with them now, but did he? Did he buy the one off? Bubba? But like, I feel no, like no. no, but but Bubba having mm-hmm. all these nice Rolexes, I feel like it kind of rubbed off on Nick, and and he went out in Vegas and got a Rolex. A drunk, his, damn. It, no, he he I, wasn't, he, but he, he pissed his fiance off. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> they're getting they're getting married Nick, here in a couple days. Here's the deal: Nick had to cancel half the wedding. I think that's what I was saying. He went from the Ritz Carlton yeah, we, we, to we, the Hilton. We went from an open bar to a cash bar because yeah. Nick bought a Rolex. Went from the Ritz <laughs> to the Hilton, <laughs> man. It's, it's, it's bad because you oh know, whoa, he's, he's even trying Wait, to work that? on. I mean, oh, this, oh, is a, this is an older one. I, I've had this for a couple years actually. It was my I think my grandfather got it in like the nineties. That's it. So oh, that's a, that's a family watch. That's awesome. That's cool. Yeah, hand me down. So that don't count. I didn't go buy it. Here's but the thing about a Rolex, though, for all you ladies out there who get upset when your man buys. Hey, Rolex. you looking at Casey? What is? <laughs> well, I just want to. I'm make sure Chad's sense. got a ton of Rolex. Yeah, Chad's <laughs> probably got a bunch. When you buy a, race cars. A, a, when you buy a race <laughs> car like Pretty Chad much. Boat, it goes down in value. When you buy a Rolex, it's going to at least hang the market, if not go up. Yeah. Imagine buying a Rolex pre-COVID; it's doubled in money. That was my favorite. My favorite part of that weekend because we have obviously given Nick a lot of shit on that oh, weekend, yeah. and he's like, "I can sell it for double right now," and I'm like. No, you couldn't, because if you could sell it for double, yeah. that guy would have sold it to you for double. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't. That, yeah. That's that's. I don't understand the the, the watch game. I would just get him a new head. Get him a new headset. Casey, that's probably he's what got, I would. Oh, he's got he one is. of those too. Oh yeah. Oh, he's heard, getting it. I've heard. So he is. Got Casey, a new scheme on the way. New scheme. No is, pain is, train. Is, is the rap song I want to rolly, rolly, rolly with a dab of ranch? Is that what it says? What, what the fuck are did you, you asking say? me? Oh yeah. What are you? Yeah. Are, you, are, you up like on the, are you up on the? Are you up on the? Up on the latest rap music? Yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, I mean, that's it's, not really late. That's I think not that late. That's old. Like ten years. Yeah. Old it's by now, long time. Yeah. I I have no idea. But if you're trying rap, to I tell thought you were in a in a line dancing. Or if you're a, trying to tell me in the line dancing. I was actually. I was not pole dancing. Line dancing. Rolly, rolly, rolly with a side dab of range. Next on stage. 
<laughs> Fred, I found it. It's 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 this song. Rolex. I know. I know the Rolex. song. I just don't know if it said Dabba uh, Ranch or if it said Dabba Ranch. Else. Put ranch on your Rolex. That's why I, I don't know. It, it is Dabba Ranch. Ranch. That's ranch. the lyric. All right. Well, we are way off topic. Let's as usual. Quickly, That's nothing new. Uh, no, obviously we mentioned the spotter changes. What are the spotter changes you got, Freddie? You got a list. You want them all? Yeah. Let's hear them. I'm not giving all of them <laughs> to you. Uh, Josh Jason Williams Jarrett, leaving. Right? Josh Williams leaving. Uh, Tyler Green mm. leaving to go to host of our. Eddie DeHunt's going to. Uh, I don't know if he's announced it yet. Yeah, but somewhere. You can imagine. Next on the list, Tim Tim Fido is going to Blaney, <laughs> so you might put that together. Uh, Jason Jarrett is leaving. Colleague, I don't know yeah. if he's announced where he's going yet. Um, Blanchard, we just said, is going to John Hunter. Crazy. Chris Osborne, I hear, is making a return. Uh, like I said, Brent Wentz, my second spotter, may be doing it. Uh, Fisher, what's his first name? Oh, yeah. No that was my second guy. That's your guy. I appreciate yeah. it, Fisher. What's his first name? Michael. Michael Fisher. Oh, yeah, I heard you got some IndyCar guy. Michael Fisher. Is that him? Going, no, yeah. They, funny, he, the middle he, of the ground guy who gets mad at the guy for trying to, you know, <laughs> hey, raise, no. his, raise his salary up. I talked to that guy, Brent, and he said he's sticking with you. Who? All, all road course no, no, stuff. No, I, I heard there was some IndyCar engineer you were bringing in to spot. Is that oh, no. That I, I've, I've got a list of people that I might need to bring better? in. I think, yeah. Something I like that. Yeah. what I heard they hired TJ's hiring an assistant. Come See? stand out there on the roof with mm-hmm. them and read data. I, I heard they hired somebody that was a spotter slash engineer. So is he going to make more money than you next year? This There's probably a good in. chance. <laughs> I'll tell you, the guys I got jobs for are going to make more money than I am, which is terrible. Yeah. Um, That's unfortunate. But... Uh, <laughs> Brett just knocked all. I really Brett just knocked all the sound out. It's back. Now. I don't <laughs> think I really helped that. So. Um, Andy Houston is going to spot for the driver of the ten, who you probably saw hanging out in the shop the other day. Well, Joel said he signed. What he signed? Joel, I think, is going to sign to do. Well, Joel signing to do. Uh, <laughs> Coach Gibbs' new driver, who he announced on the sidelines <laughs> of a football at a football game. game yeah. <laughs> Good times. And then I don't know. I heard some other. Uh, I'm assuming. I haven't heard this for sure. I assume Trey Poole is going to spot for Chase oh, yeah. Elliott. I <clears> think. <throat> I don't know yeah, who I don't else know. they would get. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> interesting. So, interesting. But, yeah, I mean, it's it was it, dominoes. That, and that Chase Elliott and Eddie DeHunt deal just came about. Like, all these other deals we knew about months ago. That one yeah. was last <clears throat> week, two weeks ago, whatever it was. Yeah. So, that, that, that one came up so pretty what, late. So, what about uh, who you just noted going to the ten? Is that confirmed yet? I mean, Noah. It's Noah hanging out in the shop. I mean, what? I mean, you think he's just hanging out with Drew? I thought he said it to Snowball. He, uh, he, there was, I told, some, there I was some reports video, out there that he said he is the done deal. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the holdup is on announcing it. I'm assuming sponsorship or something. But yeah. they've got pictures of him hanging out in the shop. He mentioned the Snowball. <clears throat> yeah. So, I mean, it's there's it's nobody him. else to put in there. Um, there's nobody else to put in there. <laughs> what else is there? I mean, who else is left now? I mean, <laughs> I guess the Bandetto, he's still, he's still <clears throat> updating weekly on that. He's got no update. Yeah. So... <laughs> Uh, and I saw I saw AJ. Okay, uh, AJ Edmonds. <laughs> I saw AJ. Everybody loved Joel so much. I'm just gonna be a complete <laughs> soul the whole show. I mean, yeah, like uh, Joel. You know, me and me and uh, Eric got along great on the racetrack, but uh, yeah, Joel's pretty damn funny. I don't necessarily agree with everything he says, but I was. I, I, I know. I don't agree laugh. with anything he says, but it's still funny. <laughs> Yeah, the way he words something. things, like I've been trying to peel the roof back on that three. <laughs> like, like, yeah, that, that, that that had me rolling when I heard that. <laughs> oh, I mean, you, do you hold about, a grudge? I no, mean, no, apparently, a, I mean, I, I know drivers hold grudges. But, I seen but him damn, tweet, I seen that, him tweet impressive <laughs> on one. Of, I don't know if it was Couch Racer or one of Brett's tweets <laughs> that was like, it was like all oh, these spotter changes, and Joel replied, "Yeah, I'm spotting for the three next year." <laughs> He was. That was a good episode. I mean, man. Gonna, if if that happened, clear high. Uh, <laughs> every time. Get out no, there. no. He'd wait until they went green and turn his radio off Just and make him. Left. Yeah, get Black Flag to come out there. Oh, like. Oh, <laughs> oh well. Uh, what what about Tyler? What are you hearing from this test that took place in Phoenix? I don't think you want to. Our <laughs> what? Put in some crickets. It's cricket sound. <laughs> crickets. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Hey. Yeah, I'm not. Really don't don't touch that one. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Well, we know who would touch it. The good news is they, ro- they drove 2,000 miles to test mufflers. <laughs> no, they test they a lot test more than that. Splitters. I know, but couldn't we test mufflers right here in the business We park? tested mufflers last year there. I was at that test. Right? I think I think the, the mufflers deal is more of a validation. Like, you know, they made I think they made some further changes just to make sure, um, you know, they were... I, I think when we ran in Chicago, they were, you know, not really happy with, with the temperatures in the car. Uh, so they did some more work. To you know, just really get the the heat radiating through the chassis um, to the driver and all that kind of worked out a little bit better. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell y'all one thing about mufflers. 
Our cup cars are too f***ing loud. I'm, do you remember the first <sighs> test? Yeah, they're, they're really, they're, really loud. I mean, I mean, it, listen, I'm not Everything, a, the, the, the guns, like the wheel nuts, like I remember we were at the Daytona test and I was sitting up on the roof when Austin was driving a car. Oh, it's loud. I was up on the roof and I'm like, dang, you can hear those guns. They're loud from yeah. like <clears throat> half a mile away. The, the first mm-hmm. test, loud. when we tested Charlotte, I was in the infield. We weren't going to go out for like an hour or so. So I was in the infield and I was going to drive around to the roof. And so they went by and the first text I sent Brett was, these things are loud as f-. Like it was ear pierced. And it's not so much like, yeah. I don't have a problem with cars being loud, but it's like the pitch of it is like ear piercing. Look it's at that not car. Like it's a, it's, it's not like a throaty built. engine. It's I like, mean, a, like, like the old car, um, you know, Xfinity truck, the, the old cup car, you know, the Gen 6 car. Um, you know, it was loud, but like when we went to the next light. gen. We went to the next gen car. I mean, I I had to go find a an audiologist. I think it's called like a specialist to like really make sure my ear mold sealed because I would get out of the car after the race and my ears would hurt. I would lay down in bed, but they ring for a day, and they would ring for days, like drive me crazy. So I mean, the cars were just. I mean, if they were any louder, I loud. remember the the Lamar, that car they built, uh, garage, whatever. Yeah, yeah, that car. Remember when it would get on the straightaway? It, you would hear it like it would stand yeah. out. The, uh, one car by itself is too loud. When you put forty of them out there, it's way too. We loud. We tested those mufflers and, and, and last listen, year. Listen, I love loud. Like I love to know that it's a race car. I love to know yeah. that the motor's screaming. But if you're a fan and you're anti muffler right now. You've not sat at a racetrack in the Close. last year. Or they've sat at all of them, and they've lost They can't year. hear anything. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what's happened. I will say, though, those mufflers, when we tested them last year there, it was like, well, we, driving to the track, it was like 28 degrees, like in the morning. So I'm I'm sure they never got a real sense of what the heat would be when the temperature yeah, was that I cold. I, I don't think I ran that second day. Did you I, think I, I, think I, I think I saw you I was, after oh, the first yes. day. <laughs> yeah, we ran into each other that yeah, night. Yeah, we did. No, I, I was in the car. But, uh, yeah, it was a lot quieter. And, I mean, I don't know. We ran at Chicago. You know, I thought – I mean, I, I understand we kind of had to do it there. But, I mean, driving the car and, and hearing it, I, th- I mean, I always like louders better and, like, my street cars and Same. everything else. But – but I, I honestly thought the sound of the engine inside the car and outside the car was just, I mean, it's more tolerable, but also sound a little bit better, too. So I was like, yeah, yeah I don't have a problem great, with them. But I think they've, they've I don't worked problem to fix with them at that. all. What about the new uh, Toyota, and, or sorry, Camry and the Ford Mustang? What are you hearing? I know it was the first time it was on track What Phoenix. What, obviously, you weren't there, but yeah. what have you heard from that? Yeah, we had some people from 2311 attend. Uh, I think Dave Rogers went, Julian Pena, uh, maybe... I think Eric Smith may have went um, from our side, but uh, yeah, when you look at the timing sheets, it certainly looked like, um, you know, it was no surprise that 20 was really fast, but it was also really cool to see, um, you know, the 43 with Eric Jones driving it, Legacy Motor Club car. Um, be, I think they're like on the, the day that I was looking at, the first day, you know, P2, so um, certainly seems like we didn't go in the wrong direction with the new car, so, and I, believe me, I wasn't thinking we would, so <laughs> it was it was nice to see the speed out of that car, and, um, you know, I'm you know, Blaney was really fast there when we ran the uh, championship race, but uh, he seemed to have good speed too. So, it's it's hard to really say with with the test environment and you know them doing package changes and stuff. But yeah, it seems like I'm not 100 percent sure everybody goes there. Well, there's no tech at test. Just you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not sure everybody goes there with their. But like with, in today's day yeah, and age, that what's, car, what's yeah. the point yeah. in taking oh, something outrageously out of yeah. bounds to a test? What I don't think learn? you. I don't know if you take exactly. You're not going for a championship there, so I don't know if you're really. But are you really going to see anything details-wise on the car anymore, like like you used to? Like you know, you used to be able to see people getting aggressive with side skirts or def- no, deformation areas. Not, really. in areas. not on like, the car, really. I mean, our car looks quite a bit different, though. The Ford looks quite a bit different. So the, yeah. the nose of the Ford looks really high, like the fenders and, look and, really and it, tall, and the sides where it well, flares up a little the, bit. Well, I think the like the where the headlights and everything on the front of the car is just dropped down even lower, and that makes the. Fenders. But how does it yeah. how does it work? Obviously, you mentioned you know twenty three eleven guys going for a JGR car and a Legacy Motor Club car. How does that work? You're obviously not going to share certain secrets, right? You're just kind of more there for the manufacturer purpose. No, I mean like how with many ounces. Is this thing oh saved? my god! <laughs> Breast doing math. Get, I said. get, get I him water. Get yeah. him water right now. He, he was like unzipping his shirt a little bit ago. He's, oh, he's heating up. Twenty one um, plus on here. No, like with <laughs> with with us, you know, we have alliance with JGR. I don't honestly couldn't tell you LMC status with all that, but right. um, you know, they got. Dave Allen's smart crew chief. I won a championship with him. Um, very resourceful guy. You know, they've been e- even 
it towards e even through last year, you know, they were able to show up at, to the track at times and bring a lot of speed. And I know after their future partnership got announced, they weren't necessarily, I don't think they were getting the stuff they were getting before. So for them to bring that speed to the racetrack just shows that team's going in the right way. Cool. Well, before we head into Spot on Spot Off, if you all are looking for a holiday gift, head over to shopjuniornation.com. Find your Journey Mo Media merch, DBC merch, actions detrimental. I mean, you name it, they have it. I don't know about we, the we other should, merch. We should take all the empties. So we need to we need to pick it up a little bit here. Sign are you going to sign it and, and, and bring it to Junior? Yeah, I, I, I will say store. that the Dirty Mo Media merch. I can't speak for these other podcasts that are out here. Uh, on Dirty Mo Media, but the, the but the yeah the the door bumper clear Dirty Mo Media merch is nice. It's way better than the rest of that stuff. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know why you would they wear even, a Dale Junior download shirt. Who? <laughs> yeah. Nah. I wouldn't even buy that stuff with a gift card. <laughs> <laughs> TJ, that might be the funniest. <laughs> <shit I've ever. laughs> We're oh. going to debate how much the gift card was for, though. First. No, uh, I can I tell you how much out. it was. Two hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> yep, you got two of them, right? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> let's get that. That was a. That was a. Let's. Let's. Um. How can we make this not look as bad? Yeah. So continue. Carry on. Oh. Okay. <laughs> right. We'll get you a gift card. <laughs> two. Two. <laughs> Five. So <hours>. the. T <laughs> <laughs> and there should the be about media merch. Fifty <laughs> left on it. Brett, you want this other one? Yeah. You want to crack another one of them? <laughs> Oh, no, I'm no going back way. To my, Brett's shaking. I'm going he back is. to my normal beer. <laughs> oh, really? Come on. <laughs> Dude. Tyler. Look at him. I got to leave in an hour and a half. Where Are you going to be driving? I'll be fine. I'm going to drink a couple. Listen, I've already drank half a bottle of water since you said add in a water. <laughs> you, like, you like pulled, pulled back hot off the throttle a little bit? I'm hot. Well, oh, you're right behind the fire. I thought we fixed the air conditioning. <laughs> you're too close to the yeah, fire. very close to the fire. I think that's the the issue is we don't have AC, and it is very cold outside. So, Brett, you should be... Quite comfortable. Not when he's drinking that stuff. Water? <laughs> <laughs> Literally holding a water right now. Pace yourself. Oh. Pace yourself. I have no words. Kids uh, these days. Let's move on to spot on, spot off. First topic, Steve Phelps says, I don't think the answer is more horsepower because more horsepower is expensive. Brett, you're on a roll today. Uh, Go for it. Boy, I'm gonna sound real dumb. You right cool here. enough? <laughs> that won't be the first time. We'll let you know. I, I, <laughs> what did you I, I say? Thought, I thought our our motors were capable of producing massive horsepower. Right now, I thought the EFI kind of kept the number down. Is that somewhat accurate? Help you me. Know, Help me not know, sound, but so dumb. You know, I, I wish Dysinger or or um, Andy timing? Graves were here to kind of help me out here. But as I understand, it's it's not too far out of reach. But but anytime you increase horsepower, the rel or I wouldn't say the reliability, but the lifetime of the engine is going to go down, right? And so I think with the target number of races that that NASCAR is wanting us to hit, you know the amount of, amount of races we run with these engines. So I'm not lying. That, that would change. I'm not lying. Just I, I, I'm gonna be honest. I, I can't say f with with you know 100 percent certainty. I that you I, could. I, I was told by an engine builder a while back. Uh, not like a Doug Yates, but like a guy that works in the engine shop, that we run the most expensive 600 horsepower motor in the world. And I don't know if that's accurate or not, but I was also told that it was capable of running way more horsepower than what we do. Listen, fans want it. Here's here's my struggle with it. Freddie and I right now could leave the studio and we could go out and we can afford at our salaries, not yours, Tyler. CJ can't afford this. He's in a Tesla. We can afford to go out and buy all I got, a, man. a car with 650 horsepower. So the Superman mentality that I had growing up with race car drivers driving these crazy amounts of horsepower, um, i.e. Dale Earnhardt, Dale Jarrett, Ricky Rudd, whoever you want to name that drove a 900-plus horsepower car, even you when you did an Xfinity Series winning a championship – I miss that as a fan. So when, when I hear people of the media, people in the industry, people in NASCAR saying, yeah, fans don't care how many horsepower it is. Yes, I do, because I have a massive respect. I mean, listen, I had I was at FFA convention in Indianapolis. These kids walked up to the car, and they started asking me questions. What's your gear ratio? What's your horsepower? What's your transmission? What's all these things? And they're looking at me like, and they go, man, my, my uncle's dirt car has more horsepower than 600 horsepower. I don't know what to say to that. Like, it does take away oh, the yeah. Superman effect that, that I think we have. Now, listen, here's what it doesn't do. 
it doesn't lower corner speeds. Our corner speeds are through the freaking roof. What would it do? It would make our straightaway speeds higher and make you actually slow down to, to break for the corner, make the corner. So for me, I am a pro, and we've said on the show, we beat the horse to death, literally. Give more horsepower. And so if if when we have the Steve O'Donnells of the world, the Steve Phelps of the world, say, well, we're considering it, we're looking at it, and then you say this, like fans don't care how expensive it is. Like for you to say – it's more expensive. Guess what? We don't care. Fans don't care. Fans want to see you guys driving 1,000 horsepower, 215 miles an hour down a straightaway Michigan race cars. Yeah. No, I, I you know, certainly, I, uh, I feel like it was a month or two ago. I blew through, like, I don't know, from, like, 20 – it was one of those years in there we had all the horsepower and all the downforce. I was watching qualifying laps, and, man, that was exhilarating to watch. And I'm like, I mean, we're still on the edge now. But like there, there are moments where there's moments we have in the car and with how sensitive this car is from the naked eye, it's really hard to see it. You, you know, a lot of times when someone has a moment in the corner, you have to see the SMT data or the MoTeC data, if you will, in post to like see, oh, my God, that got you just about wrecked in like the middle of one or two. Oh, you wrecked. You just wrecked. You just didn't wreck. You just, like, you <clears> just, it's hard to yeah. see it because, you know, we're having to think so far ahead with this car. But I think the I mean, again, this is all kind of in Sam. There was. Oh, shoot, a couple months ago, just for fun, uh, I, you know, I asked some of the guys 23, let's just, you know, there was a weird knob we could kind of work on to just basically increase the power of the car by, I don't know, 150 horsepower. Didn't really change much. I mean, we're talking the amount of off-throttle time was reduced very little. Because the lap downforce time dropped so high? very little. No, I, I think I, it's, think I think there's a lot of things added to it, isn't there? Dra the drag of the car, the, the min speed of the car. Like, the car has a lot of scrub. Um, so my, how many horsepower would you need to make a difference? <sighs> I mean, a lot. That's what I think that – I mean, we're. I think you need to be above 1,000 horsepower to, like, I really, think that's the yeah. thing. Like, really I think that move that needle, and that is a – That's, that's a, a big very, jump. I mean, that's yeah. – I mean, To go to that, jump, would, I, know, can under, I can believe are, that. You, you can, that can happen more short term. When you're talking massive – jumps in, in I power. think that that's what they in my opinion that's what they need to do though is just all right we're gonna go we're gonna go test and we're gonna go with take Tyler and Tyler's gonna have a motor with 750 horsepower and you're gonna go there and like because what everybody does now is they, they go to the test and you see I think it was Bush the other day gets out and says you know well it's not that much different you know that like the the test at um, New Hampshire like Bell's like I don't notice a difference you know and guys are like well that's you know that's terrible yeah but and now if we took you this test and you did so all right here's 150 more horsepower and you go out there and go well that wasn't much different now that's but that's what yeah. people want to hear like not that they want to hear that but that they just want to see all right, let's try it. If effort. it sucks, effort. if it sucks, we'll go by and we'll figure yeah. it out another well, way. But like, they just seem like they're not, they're so reluctant to just, you know what, here, here, we're going to give you enough rope to hang yourself with. Here's, here's 800 horsepower. Oh, it doesn't make a difference. What do you know? Yeah. Now we still got to go back to the drawing board. Like just, just at least a piece. People but let me go, ask you go. this. Here's one, here's let one me example. ask you this. You're driving. What if they took shifting away and gave more horsepower to short track like Martinsville? You think that would make a difference? I mean, the amount of horsepower we would have to have if they took shifting away would be, I mean, it would be, it would have to jump a bunch because if we were locked into fourth gear or whatever gear it would be, third, third gear, whatever yeah. it is, um, for us to have the amount of power to spin the tires at, I don't know, let's just say it's 5,000 RPMs if you're locked into just one gear. Yeah. I mean, it ha the, the, you know, the peak would have to be so much higher than it is now. So that, that is the, to me, I don't think struggle, it's right. Like. I agree with we you. I don't think it's just power, motor. But if we take away shifting, now we have even less power in the middle of the corner. Like, yeah. I mean, it was, I mean, oh, uh, what was it? Martinsville, the tail end of that run, it was actually kind of wild. Like, we, we were starting to, at the end of the race, have enough fall off to where staying in fourth or whatever year it was was faster. But, I mean, you just go in the middle of the corner, 100 and some laps on tires, 115, 120 laps on tires, you just punch it in, you know fourth gear or whatever that if you just stayed in one gear yeah that many laps on tires with this newer softer tire that we ran you just punch it and i mean that was after 100 and let's say 15 laps of downshifting you know spinning the tires all that you so, can still do that yeah i mean the amount of power would have to be very so this is completely I opposite of what we're used to tire. <clears throat> like, I, well that's, my that's my thing is i i think it's i think it's if you're going to give them horsepower i think the tire i mean they made a bigger tire for this car right so in the la like that's one of the things that I don't think we needed was a bigger tire because, you know, everyone in the beginning, Danny always complained about the corner speed. Well, if you get more tire, they're gonna fly through the middle of the corner already. Yeah. And and I think, 
you know, that tires are a lot of grip. You give them, I don't know the exact diameters of how much bigger they are per per tire, but I'm sure that little bit is an astronom- astronomical. Astronomical. Thanks. Astronomical. Um, yeah. Too many monster <laughs> things here. Um, too many beasts. Beast. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a lot. So, and if you give them more grip and take away horsepower, and plus with the way these cars are with the downforce and everything, I just think it's going to be hard to get back to where – we're never going to get back to where we were. It's not going to go back that far. But I do think a little bit of adjustment with the motor, a little bit with tire, a little bit. And, you know, if you do 5% here, 5% there, 5% another, I mean, I think you can I think you can get it better, which I think they're creeping in on. It. How much would it mean to the fans to check the box of we tried more horsepower at a test? I mean, I, f- I feel like it would make them feel better, but the, the I feel like the worst thing we – what would be worse is if we just add 100 or 150. Got to add more. It would have to be a ridiculous amount. I think. I just think that if we're going to, even though we know it's not going to work, like just say say 150. 150, I don't think that will work. It'll it'll work. But I'm saying, just say, okay, you guys have been asking for more horsepower. Here's 150, and this cost X more to get 150, and it doesn't make a difference. Now the drivers are going to tell you we need to go to you know a thousand. That's another 250. That's that's X amount more money. You know, like I think just just appeasing the fans of hey at least we've tried it like here's here's we're gonna go we're gonna try it like let the fans let the fans hold on don't 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 just appease the fans appease the driver appease the drivers the drivers drivers should know like if tyler knows i I mean well again it's tyler does it's not reality not reality like but 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 i mean it makes sense when you think about it right like okay you know if, if we're gonna eliminate shifting to try and help short track racing i just from the dumbest thing I read all winter on Twitter oh boy. is if oh you God. if you downshift, you get black flagged. What the f*** are you talking about? <laughs> so he said that like yeah. a fan. Well, no, it, what was it what Bob's tweet? Like it wasn't Bob's. It was a fan tweet I saw. So oh, they should just black flag them if they downshift. Did you what? block them? That's what? the main thing. Did you block that no, guy? I didn't block him. Oh, I'm sure. oh. Got blocked, yeah, me. for sure. That's an interesting idea. I mean, so like, I was asking Billy, like, so are you gonna call me a pit road every time and then just. You know, call me off after I downshift. Will I get, will I get away with it? Yeah. Pit this yeah. time. Never mind. Oh, just kidding. Oh, just kidding. Uh. Where what? You almost got wrecked somewhere, Connor. Was that Donaldson? <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> Must have been his fault. It was Donaldson. You know, that was. <laughs> yeah, that was really dumb. That was all me. You ruined sure. the f-ing forever. I did. <laughs> oh, it's forever, oh it's for, yeah, and forever my fault. <laughs> forever your fault. You ruined ruin that in four, man. Oh man. Oh. You know, he's, he's that, got a mother. That, you on the Daytona what do you get Newman broadcast? for? What do you get Newman for Christmas? <laughs> I didn't get him anything, honestly. Um, he, oh. Unless unless Newman's like on the long term like plan to like get back at me, I don't actually think he's too he, upset about it. But he, because I ran him the other day and he was asking, you know, asked me about Bo getting into racing. He's like, yeah. if you need any help? Just let me know. I'm like, oh, he's okay. a good guy. But uh, yeah, I messed that up really bad. I'm like, I saw a four coming. I'm like, I gotta get to pit road. And then I look at my camera. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> 51 coming hot coming in <laughs> oh that was funny i got a good laugh out of well more big news coming from nascar last week they announced a new seven year 7.7 billion dollar tv deal that features the cw fox Damn. amazon <laughs> and tnt and nbc spot on spot of freddie what was the old deal does anybody know it was four uh, channels. This it, is but seven. it was what I'm saying, money wise, ten years, four hundred million? million, ten years, something like that. Oh, four hundred million. Oh, wow. so this is a big jump. I don't know. It was a bunch of money for ten years. Uh, um, yeah, we got all kind of channels, and it was I, if I thought we got away. In, like when we went to like a network deal, it was because it was hard to find. Like it was on TNT. It was kind of all over the place, and now we are right back to being all over the place. And I and and what's even worse, I think, is. Like I, I saw a, st- a chart the other day about where to find it for practice and qualifying, and that was basically all streaming, wasn't it? Like, That's my biggest fear. Like, That's my biggest concern. Th- there's nowhere to find any of that stuff, or I mean, you got to you got to search for it. So. I don't know. It, it, I'm glad that the, there's more money coming in, and that that's obviously or hopefully going to help everybody. Hopefully that the, this will give the teams a bigger chunk, and they could finally afford to pay us more money. Um, but uh, you calling out? I'm Denny? gonna tell you what they don't calling out, do. Denny. <laughs> share it with you. Oh, they're not gonna share it. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't heard anything about my raise. I've been waiting. Um, Probably can keep waiting for a while. Probably we'll see. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, hopefully, like I said, you know, this is hopefully this injection of money helps the sport, but. 
if that's how you had to go to get the money, that's how you had to do it. But it just seems like we're kind of scattered across the board here. I don't know what the CW broadcast is going to look like. Uh, I tried to watch. I think there's a couple football games on there that I tried to watch. Super it, high def. It, 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 I mean, you know, <clears throat> the football games weren't bad. Um, and it's going to be NASCAR production, so I'm assuming that it's going to be the same as what the, you know. Yeah, I'm else sure. More consistent. Yeah, yeah. Um, for sure. So you know, it, it'll just be interesting to see what they have as far as hosts and and stuff like that. Um, but. Listen, it just seems like it's it's going to be a challenge finding some of the content you want to watch. You well, I think like the real diehard fans, right, that are really locked in are going to know where to find every single thing. that The fans that want to watch practice, yeah. right? Like They're going to know. But the problem is like you talk about the diehard fan that wants to watch practice. Does he have HBO Max? Or well, the good thing is with a lot of these things, you can you can get them if you want them. Oh, you yeah. don't have to have other stuff. So I, I'm... I'm kind of spot on. I'm optimistic about it because it might open the door for a lot more people to, you know, to to have access to it. And obviously, it's um, a pretty big deal. So I don't think NASCAR would do it if they couldn't give people access to it. Like, I, I, like I think they want to please the fan. I think they want to get it out there. And I think they've done their homework and seen the. Obviously, they've they've been through with these people. I just, they don't. I just <clears throat> know, like going back, like my dad would want to watch everything. If yeah. my dad, my dad wouldn't be able to find practice well, qualifying. There's like year. diehard fans and there's veteran fans. Yeah, your dad, right? your dad. <laughs> differences here, <laughs> you know right? I mean? Yeah, you're, but veterans like, like oh, I don't know what channel. You're, I'm yeah. through the channel. Twenty years ago, it. your dad wasn't worried about where he's going to watch the streaming stuff at. You know what I mean? Just oh, that times awesome. are turning, and I think, I think it's going in that direction, and I don't think there's any stopping it. I think the, I think. It's just going that way, and I think we just have to adapt and hope people do as well. Here's what's good about it. Oh. Casey, you go ahead. You, I want to hear your <clears throat> analytical No, go for it. No, you, you, want, you want to be an analyst? Jump in. No, you tried to talk twice. I don't oh. think you're coming again. Why'd you say try? Go ahead. No, I, I want to hear what she's got to say. She tried to jump in twice. I didn't know she was going Somebody's for in the Christmas spirit today. Merry Christmas. He's on fire. He's in the fire. <laughs> um. I also have to pee. So, again, <laughs> please don't talk long. It's better than that one time you went in there for like five minutes. Please. <laughs> I was just going to say, I think now more than ever, Teams, we talked about this before, teams, drivers, sponsors, NASCAR itself, they have provided more content on social media than they ever have before, which is giving them that access, right? Second, I mean, we talk about the sport and the growth and popularity of it. Who would have thought all of these, you know, broadcasts and all of these networks were interested in the sport and want to help it grow, right? I mean, that is a good sign for the sport. If I were a sponsor, I would look at that and say, well, you know, if people are interested, if they think that we're going to have the viewership, which these networks do, obviously, then since they bought into it, then, you know, that's a, a sign of growth within our sport, which we, I feel like we've had more of than we've ever had. It'd be cool if we had like crossover <coughs> where like the NBA on TNT guys come out to the race and Supercross. I've seen you stand next to football, oh, <laughs> basketball players. Yeah, Shaq, we don't need any more out there like, for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Michael's already really tall, right? But Shaq's like a whole nother level. Spud right? Webb. Next to all the drivers. Dude, Shaq is gigantic. There, I. Holy cow! We used to have one of his shoes, and it's in, in Mike studio. Davis' office. Yeah, I'm and telling you, he was having a blast on the uh, the grid. Did, at the uh, Vegas Dude, Vegas. That was so funny. Oh, Did you see God. when he, he came to Concord? That, guy off. that was so funny. Did you see Here, when he came to Concord? Loves, uh, Here, before y'all go talk about Shaq's feet size. Uh, you know what they say. <laughs> Here, here's, he wears big socks. <laughs> I, my, my, my favorite thing about <laughs> this whole TV package is it appears NASCAR got more money, which is awesome. It, that's big for the teams. It's big for the charter members. It's big for the, the next seven years of the sport. I think that's awesome. Um, the fans are saying, our spoiled fans, according to Joy Logano, are saying that, you know, it's in too many places. I don't want to hear that. I really don't because you have a smartphone that if you says, if, if you say, what NASCAR channel do I need to watch today to watch qualifying? It's going to tell you. And if you don't have a smartphone, then just follow Bob Pockers on Twitter because every mm -hmm. week he tweets out exactly where everything is Can't going really follow to be. Bob if you don't have a smartphone because you won't have Twitter. Well, you got a computer. You can figure out where it's going to be, what channel it's going to be on, what time it's going to be on. So I don't want to hear the complaining about that. Here's my struggle. I'm 48 years old. I don't have Peacock. I don't have Amazon Prime. I grew up coming You got eight from, kids. You don't have Amazon I, Prime? I, nope. Wow. You should. I, not, not on Brett Griffin's iPad, nor, well, on I mean, my, nor on my television. Someone in your house has Amazon so Prime. So when I come home from college and I wanted to watch practice, which I did on every Friday afternoon, at 3 o'clock Eastern, 
I can't do that now because I don't have the, the subscriptions for it. Um, when I want to watch qualifying at a bar, if I go to MILF's, which it's Uncle MILF's is the name of it. It's not <laughs> I well, think I mean, that's, that's actually not the name even, of it. That's it's not Lake even Norman the name Tavern. of it. Okay, yeah. it's, it's Lake Norman Tavern, but what do we call it, Tyler? Yeah, everyone calls it that. Yeah. We call it what I said, <laughs> yeah. Uncle MILF's. You never see any in there. I don't know why. I mean, my little guy's 11. He's got, Dad, can we go to MILF's to get a cheeseburger? And I'm like, sure. But one, anyway, one day he's but, say, but when I MILF's? walk into MILF's on Friday <laughs> afternoon and I want to watch qualifying, they're not going to have it on. Like that, my struggle is what if I want to watch it and A, my device doesn't get it because I don't subscribe to that, or B, I'm in a, in a bar that doesn't show it. I mean, Freddie and I were in, where were we at in, in, uh, to watch the clash that year? What beach were we at? Uh, Santa Monica Pier. Secret. Santa Monica Pier. We left Santa Monica Pier. The race is five, seven miles away, according to the guy in Belize that Freddie's buddies with. We get there 45 minutes later in a $2,000 Uber ride. <laughs> And, and we literally, there's there's 10 TVs in there, and we say, hey, man, can you put on the NASCAR race? Oh, is it around here? Yeah, it is, actually. It's the L.A. Coliseum. Boom, we put it on, we watch it. I'm afraid that can't happen anymore. That's what I'm worried about. I, I think those need to evolve as well, though. You know, like places like that need to evolve with the times as well. Yeah, but and that's expensive. I, 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 I'm not saying. Maybe there's some sort of package that gets worked out with, with, with per, like, you know, places like that, bars, restaurants, and things. Like DirecTV, they made a package for bars they and restaurants. They pay per seat. Per they pay seat. out the ass. And I actually was having uh, drinks with Doug and his uh, girlfriend, Gina. And she was like, oh, it ain't a big deal. You just stream it right to the bar. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think it works that I way remember my buddy owns business. the bars in, uh, a couple of bars in Georgia. And you literally have to pay, like, whatever – it's. I think it was like a UFC fight, and it say it's thirty nine ninety nine. You got to pay that. Like you got to pay some absorbent amount of money per seat at capacity. So Jeez. it's it's you know it's. You know what they need to do is uh, do a deal like Touch Tunes. You go in there, you can touch tunes the TV with put i put Whatever Apple TVs on there. You want to watch that TV? You that's touch a bad tune. idea because nah. Dale will be changing the fucking <laughs> channel. Jesus, the, that's the worst idea I've ever heard. Be, Dale, man, imagine a bar fight over the channel. Imagine going to MILFs and having control of whatever you wanted on that TV with your phone. That'd be a hell of a channel uh, watching hey, MILFs. It's hey, man, would, corner, wouldn't it be fun? Changing the channel every five minutes. <laughs> yeah, I, listen, I, I think it's great for owners. I think it's great for NASCAR. I think it's great for tracks. We don't know what the division looks like in terms of the money yet. I know a lot of people a lot smarter than me are going to figure that out. I think it's good for drivers. Um, I've watched I, – I lived the era of the highest-paid drivers in NASCAR history. I watched rookies come in and get massive contracts to drive race cars. Now I'm watching rookies come in and get crappy. And, and owners and general managers and presidents that are going to hear me say this, I don't care. It pisses me off that a guy goes out there and works 40 weekends a year, risks his life, works endless hours in a simulator, works at a test, does things for you, obviously races on the weekend, and he can make half a million dollars driving a cup car. That pisses me off because I grew up in the era where guys were making $10 million plus driving a race car. In no other sport do I see their athletes, i.e. major league anything, going backwards from a finance perspective, and Tyler, I don't, you don't want to speak to this, that upsets me. I think the good news is guys like Denny Hamlin, he made a lot of money driving a race car. It is awesome for him to get to be an owner. When Dale Earnhardt owned DEI, Dale Jr.'s initial Cup Series salary coming in as a rookie was bank. I ain't going to say how much money it was. It was bank. So for me, seeing guys like the younger guys, like Denny, obviously Michael Jordan, how much money Michael Jordan made playing ball? Billions. I'd imagine a lot. So, so for me, like I, I'm a big fan of that. I'm, I'm a big fan of, of us seeing more money come back in because it should be shared with the teams. It should be shared with the drivers. I don't know how far down the ladder it gets to, unfortunately, crew guys and spotters and that kind of thing, but I'm a big fan of money. So I was looking at this on Reddit this morning. and uh, Sorry, I turned red right there. I got upset. Reddit. <laughs> uh, I guess on the money lap, Adam Stern said something about like the deal – if the deal's not done by, by Daytona, you, you could see teams essentially striking. Like no chance Daytona five hundred. Not, not, not Daytona, but he said like you know, and, and not so much striking as just doing things during the race to to show their displeasure with the fact that this deal's not done yet. And I just, don't, I mean, I don't see that happening. I, I, I mean, don't either. The problem I mean, is they won't, they, they won't all do. They won't all do. It. It. Somebody wants to win the race. Like you just say, all right, here we're, when they throw the green flag, we're coming down pit road the first time. Let's say all the A drivers say we're going to do it. Let's say Justin Haley 
says I'll do it, and Corey Joy says I'm not doing it. Like it, it screws the whole thing up. So I don't, I don't see that. I don't see all them. Me neither. No, I don't I, see everybody. Say, going, but, but speaking back to last year, Tyler, I'd love to hear your perspective on this because last year we were sitting here worried about the safety of this car. Mm-hmm. NASCAR made massive gains, right? Yeah. No, it's been a lot better for sure. Um, you know, it was it uh, obviously it's tricky, right? Like with where we've w- the direction we went with the chassis, the parts, everything, right? It takes more time to m- implement those changes, but uh, yeah, it's made it's made good strides in, in helping you know the driver and and the I guess the absorption of of that of that energy. heavy car yeah. that energy getting yeah. absorbed. In deflection and all that sort of stuff. Um, they yeah, made been big great, changes. Great for us. Well, we sat here with Jamie McMurray, who obviously isn't driving this car, and he's like, man, if I'm a driver, I'm going to really focus on my compartment, my headrest, my helmet, my things I can control. NASCAR went to work on the things they could help these teams with, and we're not sitting here. I mean, a, a year and a half ago, Freddie and I would go out for a beer or have dinner or talk on the phone, and we would literally be worried about you guys when you would wreck. I mean, the Kurt Busch wreck. It didn't look bad. You no, know? the ones that don't are like, even that's, Bowman. That's the scary part. Like they, they that, didn't that's look the crazy bad. Part. Tyler had to park at Martinsville from getting hit on a restart. restart. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so so for me, like kudos to NASCAR for what they did on the safety side. Yeah, yeah. It's not even an issue now. I mean, we don't even. It's not even on the radar now anymore. I mean, I mean, it's always on the radar, but it's not an issue. So yeah, I, I hope that they can get. I mean, going back to the TV thing, I hope this thing's a positive for everybody. <clears throat> I just don't understand the fans that are out there worried about, well, I don't know what channel to find it on. Well, good God Almighty, you can Google directions on how to drive from here to Bozeman, Montana. Surely to God you can figure you're, out what channel. You're talking to one of our friends right now. You know <clears throat> I know. Yeah. I'm talking to a <laughs> lot of friends. <laughs> and, look, NASCAR doesn't want to hide the racing from you. No. You no. know, they want you to see the racing. But so I'm worried. This is, you, you, know, you find out where it's at, and you go, well, I don't have that. That's well, what yeah, I'm worried about. Yeah, how it goes, right? Like, I, I feel like I'm guilty of this when I watch other sports. Um or, or, you know, when I'm pulling up my phone, I want to watch practice or whatever it is. Um, you know, if you just aren't, you know, if you last minute, like, I'm going to jump in and watch this, and you haven't thought about it or thought it through, right, you're going to be jumping around trying to find it. But uh, thankfully, Casey, y'all at Xfinity have given me a lot of, a lot of good uh, – He gave you that. A lot of good <laughs> options to watch pretty much every race with the app. So I've been um, – I thankfully, when I, I can't really figure it out, I've always got that to go to and just – I'll find it there. Speaking of Xfinity, Anthony Alfredo just announced he's going to drive the five car for our motorsports. Uh, Tyler Ankrum is going to drive the 18 truck for Bill McAnally, which seems like McAnally is kind of absorbing a lot of the uh, GMS kind of equipment. Yeah, he's growing. Uh, they got a diff- sure. bunch of different trucks. Bye, Brad. AJ Thad to Moffitt's Xfinity. got a really exciting oh, announcement coming. Brett's I can only gotta imagine pee. what that is. <clears throat> yeah, Petty, Petty Deal has an announcement coming, it seems like. Oh, my God. Damn. What the f*** are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Stuff falling. Good everywhere. talk. Um, yeah, but that's cool for Alfredo. It's there's a lot of news dropping late this year. It seems like, isn't it? Well, it's PRI week, and I feel like that's the week. Also. I don't know. I just feel like a lot of things are done a lot later. Well, this there's. Year. I mean, you you got cup two cup teams, two fairly prominent cup teams looking for drivers still. Um, yeah. <clears throat> what is that? It's a, this is you've got it. It's, it's your cheat sheet of all the silly oh. season moves. Um, there's no way this is all of them. It's not all of them, <laughs> but a lot of the notable ones. I mean, you got false information on here. Like what? <laughs> what crew get, Chiefs, huh? they just announced the Spire Crew Chiefs yesterday. There's question marks and Kevin oh, Bellacourt. See, Bellacourt's not there anymore. See, who's I, the, I who's the Crew Chiefs? Ago, uh, Hostbar why. got Lambert, I think, Luke Lambert. Okay. And Zane got, uh, no, who got, oh, somebody just got Harvick's uh, engineer. Was that maybe Hostbar? He went to, uh, it was, I have. Bellacourt? Uh, Steve. Where's he not? Uh, yeah, I don't know his name. Um, Duran, Steve Duran. Duran. Yeah, he went to he went to Spire, I think, right? Yes, he did. He, he was Chad's old roommate. Yep. He went to Zane, and then Luke Lambert went to Hosovar. Uh Jesse loves on here. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, we got all that. Josh Williams calling eleven is a good deal for Josh. Um, who else? Gragson, we've talked about in the ten. The the Colleague Cup car, I don't know what the hell's going on with that deal. Uh, apparently, yeah. it's not title it's, it's anymore. It's not. Well, I, it, well, I don't know. <laughs> it seemed like it was. I have no idea. And then Dale said it. Dale said on his show, and then it seemed like it wasn't. AJ, they announced AJ's full-time Xfinity, 
But then they also said AJ is going to run some cup races. They didn't specify if he's going to run some cup races in the 16 or the 13. Or So I may be really unemployed if he's not running some of the third Yeah, car. you might be real done. I might need a second spotter job. Uh, I'll, see, I'll see if I know anybody. Poacher. Right. Um, poaching season. I'm not poaching <laughs> shit. I'm, I'm looking for some. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brett's got an IndyCar guy. You can have. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, I don't know. There's, but to your point, yes, it's very late in the year for two teams that are fairly, especially one at Stuart Haas, and then one at Colleague that you don't even know. We're getting into what mid? What's what's today's date? Like the tenth or something. It's like the seventh like, of December. Mm, yeah, we're early right. December, but still, it's but late. still, it's still pretty late for t- two teams not to have cup. Drivers. I mean, dude, you've already skipped the snowball, been to a beach. It's late. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Turkey's already done. <laughs> Oh boy! It's the 11th today. You're lying. Is it? Well, this it's episode's going to drop. Oh, on the 11th. we don't know what oh. day it is. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you it's at least the 10th. You liars! All right, Casey, <laughs> carry on. <laughs> Freddie, I knew what you were doing. Yeah, you <laughs> f-ing idiots. Oh, uh, you guys alluded to this earlier, but Joey Logano says our fans are spoiled in regards oh. to the access they have to drivers during an average race weekend compared to other leagues like the NFL. Spot on, spot off, Tyler. Hold on a second, Tyler, before oh. you answer this, because I watched this whole video to make sure that his quote was not out of context. Out of context. It was not out of context. All right, well, I'm glad you did. Um yeah, I'm, he loves this. He loves. I feel like he likes to get some attention when he's on. He's, he's trying on the to show. maybe he's trying to knock um, Denny off the boot list. I mean, what's he <laughs> like or the top of the boot list? I should say. I don't think that's going to happen. I, I, no. Yeah, I feel like Denny, I understand what he that. meant, but his delivery was just so it what? Was not terrible. Terrible. What it, Tyler? You know? What do you think? How do you think he meant it? I mean, I don't know how he meant it. Like, but like from my perspective, yes, you know, the fans get a lot of opportunities to, you know, I feel like it's easier to get into a garage, a cup garage, Xfinity garage, truck garage, than it is to, well, I guess, you can't really compare a truck and Xfinity, right? It's a different level, but, you know, um, like when I went to, uh, when I went to see a Broncos game last January, I mean, it, it took knowing some serious players to, to get on the field and just stand on the field, not necessarily get to meet Russell Wilson or meet meet this, this player or this coach. You know, it was one of the, I think it was one of the assistants before they cleaned house so I lost my my in over there Damn but um, I mean it takes serious connections to even just get close to them right not necessarily even guarantee you're gonna get a photo or an autograph or you know a conversation with them so um, I feel like you know NASCAR tries to NASCAR the tracks the teams all try to make a pretty good effort to give the fans a lot more access than um, the other sports do and I mean I guess I can't really touch on it because I don't know right like I don't know how many other you know I don't know if you know like NFL teams are getting fan mail and they're having their their players come in and sign stuff. But like like we were talking about earlier, you know, like like you know, I I went and sat. You know, if you're if you're sitting in a suite, I feel like you're not going to get an experience with the fans like that. You're sitting down by right by the by the bench. Uh, your interaction is different, right? And I can't really speak on that like like you can, yeah. TJ. I think that where where I get lost here is I think that sometimes you get confused with access versus being seen, like. Tyler, uh, Kyle Larson stands at the back of his trail at these dirt races and will meet yep. every single person that is lined up there. And you could take, they take pictures and the line goes on for hours and hours and hours, it looks like. Joey references walking out of the driver's meeting and signing a handful of autographs is that, you know, they, that's how they get close to us. Or they can walk out in the grid and take a picture with me five minutes before the race. No, they can't. No, they cannot. Well, you know, they, some people can. Maybe a sponsorship or, or a guest of the team or if you might be able to get a grid picture. Pit road. Like, but, you, like, those people don't have access. You talked about, like, the way you got access to the football game was you had to know some people. Like, I know how many – I mean, I know you don't know this number off the top of your head. Maybe you can say one or twice a week. How many meet and greets are you doing a week? Uh, at the track, I feel like we got like uh, Hold on a four to five number. But how many are public? Yes, that's my point. Oh, it's public and you can walk up and, yeah, I mean, no, it's it's all like, you know. It's, it's with, all with, sponsors. It's, know, a, it's, it's sponsors, yeah. with beasts. guests of the yeah. team. It's never right. just like, hey, come in yeah. the hauler and hang out with Tyler. Yeah, there's like, no that's souvenir, make, you know, there's yeah, no yeah, souvenir deal. You're going to be here for an hour. Yeah, I mean, like, and you do do stuff out in the in the fan zone. That is one thing that maybe could change that a little bit, right? Like, I feel like. You know, when it comes to merchandise, like depending on what your deal is, I, I feel like there's a good number of drivers out there. Um, you know, there's some drivers like Kyle Larson, I think Elliot. There's other drivers that have it set up really good to where, you know, in a way you get rewarded or you're getting something out of it. Right. Like. Yep. Um, and then there's others that 
probably don't see much, if not any, of you know merchandise sales. So you're not really, I know that sounds bad, right? But you're not really incentivized for the right or the wrong reasons to interact, right? So that that could that's something I think that could certainly make that better, yeah. right? I think our, I think our fans have incredible access. I think that being the fact that they can come in the garage, but the, you're not you're not you know like he makes it sound like. You know, Joe Schmo can walk up to his car five minutes before the race. I'll say it. I'll say it. I'll say it. Joey Logano is full of (laughs) Okay? He's full of massive (laughs) Of massive Massive (laughs) Because what he's saying isn't true. Fans eight years ago, pre-COVID, pre-recession in 2008, they were accustomed to Tyler Reddick. No offense to you because you're younger. you, You don't remember these days. But Tyler Reddick's caliber of driver would be doing 60-plus public appearances a year. And he would be doing them in grocery stores for Monster. He would be doing them in Hooters restaurants. He would be doing them all over the place that the public can get to. Now the sponsors are not spending the money to fly the drivers in because the return analytics have changed. What's important to the sponsor? It's not getting 500 people into a grocery store anymore. It's completely different. So, like, for Joey to sit here, who grew up, rich as hell in the Northeast, who raced his whole life, who came down here, races now. He said drivers, NASCAR drivers make a little bit more money. The f*** they do. How much money does Landon Huffman make a year racing? <laughs> not much. How much money does Joey Logano make a year racing? So don't, Brett. don't tell me. I'm not done bitching yet. Hold on a minute. So don't tell me that, that our fans are f***ing spoiled because they are not spoiled. They're accustomed to – a fan my age is accustomed to being able to meet – Bill Elliott at McDonald's at University Area by UNCC after qualifying from 6 to 8. That's what they're accustomed to. Joey Logano probably don't sign. Okay, how many times does he go to Planet Fitness a year to sign autographs? How much money is he making to do that? Good for him. He's not doing it as often as he was when he got here. Once he signed his seven-year Pennzoil Pinsky contract, COVID hit, he went missing. Don't don't give me that, that. And this isn't just about Joey Logano. This is about any of our drivers that don't appreciate our fans – because our fans spend 2000 we talked about this on here, 2000 to $5,000 a weekend to go and take their families to the racetrack. That is a pile of money. So the, the fan standing on the fence or the fan that gets to walk out on the racetrack for the pre-race concert, they don't get your autograph. They might get to high-five you as you walk down the stage. Yeah, yes. it's not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. Yeah. What, what we do know about our fans is they, they love our sport. They're passionate about our sport. They want to meet our drivers. So let me, let me speak for you fans – by, by saying this, there are other ways now to meet your drivers. Just don't be a pain in the ass about it. Know that they go to places like Millbridge. Know that Kyle Larson races all over the country. Know that Tyler Reddick tweets wherever he's going to be when he's going to do something fun if he's at a Broncos game. I promise you, if you walk up to Tyler Reddick and say, hey, man, will you take a selfie real quick? As he's walking through the parking lot going into the Broncos game, he 100% will. But to say our fans are spoiled, that's a, a I don't care what Stefan – Diggs did on a sideline, TJ. I'm tired of seeing. I'm that just video. saying that's what you could do for in comparison. That, a regular this is a ticket, episode, okay? I, I just I, a regular ticket gets you that though. A, a regular ticket doesn't get you that. On at the football game, it did. I just that's a that's my, my video. Okay, so if I'm you saying go, at if the football you to, game. If you go to the 49ers game and you're in the upper deck, you're going to get that video of, of playing pitch and catch with. McCaffrey? If you walk down there, but well, that's a ticket you can you, buy, right? Like, you walk down there and the ticket they don't check tickets before three hours before the game like that. You, you walk you, down you, there and do that. Our fans don't deserve to be spoken to in the context in the way that he said that. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing is our fans have good, at, great access. You know, we've talked about it here before. They get, to, they get to listen in on the radio, which you don't do with these other sporting events. They get to listen in a lot of stuff. But to say they're they spoiled. They pay for that. Yeah, I know. They pay for that. It, but, but to say they're spoiled, is just, yeah, it just crosses the line for me. Okay, so, Brett, you mentioned Sorry, Casey. there's no reason, you know, sponsors – you and I remember, I think I was at a bar with Brad Kozlowski every single Thursday of night before you were a race GMR marketing. with for Miller Coors. Yep. And we did the same thing with multi- multiple sponsors. Tyler, we brought you to a few Xfinity stores, Harvick Xfinity stores. You mentioned sponsors might not see the value or their goals have changed. They changed. Right. So how do you bring that back? What What is... NASCAR's got to bring that back. Now. NASCAR's got to figure out a way, the same way that we go into markets. Man, when I landed in Vegas, um, Freddie and I walked into a store, and it was a $250 F1 shirt that was, that was hanging up for sale. But when I landed in Vegas, the whole airport said F1 is coming. 
when I land in Vegas on NASCAR weekend in the same airport, I may not see a single sign that says NASCAR is coming and or NASCAR is we here. We landed in Vegas on NASCAR week, and there was all F1. That's all it said. <laughs> I, I'm trying to be nice about it. <laughs> my, my point is we're, we've become – we're in the check cashing business. we got to write some more checks. I saw NASCAR announce they've got this big – you know, 50 plus thousand square foot productions company. That's awesome. We got to be on the radio. We got to be on the billboards. We got to be on all the things. And NASCAR has to figure out a way. NASCAR was in the best business of the world. Winston took their sport to the marketplace. Guess who came in and did it even bigger? Sprint. 70 plus million dollars a year they spent on activations, taking our sport to the marketplace. When Monster came in, Monster's business model was completely different. It wasn't wrong. It was right for them. Now there's four like present presenting sponsors, um, but nobody is taking us to the marketplace the way that M and M's did, the way that UPS did. I could keep going. I'm not going to bore you with that. But like we've got a, NASCAR has to figure out a way themselves what's the most efficient way to take our drivers to the marketplace because every time somebody meets Tyler Reddick, here's the best thing about our drivers, including Joey Logano. When you meet our drivers at a hospitality, at a restaurant, um, at a bar, at an appearance, five minutes before the race because a sponsor got you a pass, you feel there and you feel like you know our driver and you have a big connection with that driver for the rest of your life. And you pull for that guy for the rest of your life because you feel like you know him. Oh, I know Tyler Reddick. We hung out. We took a picture together. He asked me if I had kids. Like, that is – that is what we're missing as a sport because our sponsors spent all that money to take us and make us in the marketplace with our drivers. We don't have that anymore. If, if, if it were, when we went to, to out west or midwest, Menards would have all the Penske drivers in there signing autographs for two hours apiece. They'd have their own race fest in the parking lot. I ain't seen I that. don't know. I, I kind of – I agree to some extent, but we're still selling out, so fans are obviously staying there, and they're spending – they're going to the bars. They're doing things like – I think that I, – I don't know what the, like, answer to this is, but the appearances are happening. I mean – we're no, doing no, them not, not not as much as there no, not, not as much as there was. Close. They're down ninety percent. Is that the stat you made up? Go do the math. Okay. Oh, anyways, spot on, spot off. Tony Stewart announces that he will run a full NHRA top fuel season. TJ, I'm spot on. I think uh, what they say he was she was Leah stepping out. Yeah, he's um, taking her ride. Yeah, yeah, so he's taking, trying to start a family. Yeah, that's, that's that's cool. So I think he's in a. I think he's in a good situation. I think he's having fun, and spot on. Tony Stewart having fun is always a good thing. Is there anything this guy can't do? <laughs> if it's got wheels and a motor. Yeah, I mean it's it's ridiculous. He's gonna win a race. Oh, he won the damn. He's already done that. Did he win top the alcohol? He won a race, yeah. top alcohol race yeah. a while back. He, he was leading the points last I looked in the last race. I don't know if he won a championship. He'll win. Or not, but he'll win a race. Well, he'll win multiple races. Yeah, he will. He he said this was per somebody else. Like he didn't know if he was good enough to do it. Last year when I was at the the, the racetrack walking around in Charlotte, they were like, "Yeah, Tony doesn't know if he's good enough to do it." I'm thinking, uh, "He's Tony Stewart. I'm pretty sure he's good enough to do whatever Still he sets his mind to." But like, it's cool for fans. It's cool for an HRA that somebody of his caliber's gonna do it Tyler like I mean have you ever considered doing that no but but seeing like you know Kyle's obviously set the bar very high but like what he does is awesome um you know post your post NASCAR racing career right like being able to go out there and do those things certainly there's risk involved right but as a as a competitor right that doesn't really bother you you know you want to keep competing and doing things so yeah I mean I'm gonna have my eyes glued to what he's got going on and see how well that goes because I mean is a is a competitor you're never going to like just shut down an idea you know you're always going to be open to trying something else and we and this came up a bunch on this show this year obviously because of bowman and chase um and if you don't want to talk about we don't have to we can cut it but um contractually can you are you obligated are you obligated to not drive anything like is there something you can't drive or is it like i mean as long as as, you know it's you know as long as it's something really ridiculous you know I, I'm pretty sure me and Denny are on a good, good, you know, understanding. I'm not going to just go jump in something and not, not talk to them about it. And if there's something he's not comfortable with, I won't do it. But, um, yeah, I think it's, it's pretty straightforward in that front. Like, you know, as long as it's not going to interfere, um, 
you know, with, with my commitments to the team and what we got to get done during the week, um, I, you know, obviously I won't do it without Denny's blessing, right? Like I'm getting, um, paid a, a lot, getting paid a lot of money to drive a race car for him and, and do it at the highest level and be fully committed to it. So I don't want to, um, do you, you know, track myself or, or potentially even anything on the table that would hurt our performance on Sundays. Do you see yourself one and would it help or hurt returning to dirt racing? I mean, I know dirt lay models background is, is where you come from. That world is blowing up with multiple high paying races. I know we've talked about, you know, the, the thought of maybe getting a chili bowl car or something like that. Um, Don't do it. <laughs> what? Um, but like, is that something you want to get back into or is it something now like right now you're just so focused on cup racing that you this know, year was, um, there was a lot going on this year, you know, this off season had some other stuff I had to take care of too. So I wasn't really thinking about racing until we got back going on the cup side, but, but certainly I feel like, um, I guess it's kind of an unknown, right? Like it's been so long since I've done other stuff. There was a, on occasion, a couple of times I went and ran a main sprint at, at Millbridge, um, ran some other, other cars and other series. You know, we, uh, I think there was a, two years there. We went and ran, uh, some WRL events at, at Coda and, and NOLA, and that was good experience. It wasn't necessarily dirt, but getting in other things and running other cars, racing against other drivers. Um, I think it's, it's just good. Like, you just continue to sharpen your, your skills, maybe learn some new skills. Like, I feel like, um, you know, especially when I'm spending more time on iRacing, you know, just driving just completely different cars, whether it was dirt or asphalt. You just pick up on different things that you just have to learn, like, it's a different driving style every time, depending on the car. Um, but the, the more that you can just adapt quickly, um, I think the better the driver that you will be. And, and you can do, you can help that process by jumping in other cars and running other races. But again, I've noticed with the amount of tools and resources and the technology that we have on the cup side, you can spend a lot of time on the simulator um, and it will reward you. But there are some weeks where you do and you don't, necessarily see that reward something isn't quite right but but that's where you know if you're not around during the week to be able to put that time in you're not gonna be able to improve it so just trying to figure out how much time I can you know what weeks are good to maybe go off and do something else what you know what days of the week can I be away trying to figure that out first before I just blindly jump into it is probably the if the you right want to see some really good pictures just google Tyler Reddick back in his dirt racing yeah, days thank you yeah um, <laughs> he's the first time I remember seeing you race I think you were four years old you had hair down in the middle of your back, and <laughs> it yeah. was ridiculous. Was it a dirt race? What, yeah, it was a late model, the eleven yeah. car. Right? I think it was. What's Danny yeah, yeah. like as a boss, man? Like I don't mean great, as, phenomenal. I don't. I don't, I don't, don't I listen don't, to him. But I don't I mean as like a successful <laughs> race car driver, mentor, boss. Like what is he truly like as a boss? Man, he's. I I knew he was going to be involved, and I got that 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 understanding pretty early on. But just like, I mean, he's he's very clued in everything that's going on. And he's got great people at 2311 to, to handle the different pieces of the puzzle, if you will, that make up a race team, whether it's, you know, you know, like like Steve or on the competition side or the marketing side. So, you know, the social media content side, like he's got people in place to do that stuff. But don't get me wrong. He's definitely clued in on what's going on. You know, we, we had a production day yesterday uh, with Beast Unleashed and for for what the cars that we're going to have um, um, next year. And he's, you know, he popped in seeing the car in person. Like he's very tuned into what's going on. And obviously on top of that, we got a shop that we're building and, and it's getting close to being done. I saw it yesterday. It's, it's really sweet. Which fans can see you right off of I-77. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can, you, hit it with, you, you can you hit know, it with a rock. <laughs> how do you know yeah. it's 2311? Because the windows are really windows, funky. Yeah, yeah sure. you, you won't miss it. Um, you know, he's very, very locked in and, you know, it's been great to lean on him to get better at short tracks. It was, it was kind of, it, 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 it gave me a laugh. Uh, what, you know, after Richmond, he was kind of upset with how much he helped me there because he couldn't pass me in the first stage. But I took care of myself by the end of the race for him. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, it, it's been nice to, to see. I mean, he really cares about it. You know, I could say the same thing about Michael. He's very clued in uh, to what's going on. Michael may not be in Charlotte, North Carolina, or in Mooresville every single day, but he's very very locked in on what's going on. So it's, I mean, I've been really impressed with, with how much time and effort Denny puts into it. And it's, it's a tough, it's hard for, I, I don't know how he does it, honestly, but being a driver and an owner. I'll we'll put you on the spot. You think you got a three car soon? I haven't had any hints about it, honestly. Um, I've kind of been away from the shop a little bit though, the last couple of weeks. I don't, I mean, I don't see it 
um, <laughs> next year. But, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if down the road that's something they want to do because, I mean, the more – obviously, I, I think the model they have works really good. And I think, you know, if you add a third car, it would just continue to improve that, you know, the way that, the way that our team goes about it. Um, I, you know, I, I think we have the room for it. I, I don't want to speak for, for those guys. But um, I, I think if we're successful and we win races and, you know, we uh, – you know, our partners are happy. Why, why not add a third car? Put you on the spot again. Pick an Xfinity driver you got to get to go could be your uh, third car Ooh. teammate. Any of them. Doesn't yeah. matter how long they've been there, if they're brand new. Xfinity driver. That ran last year. Dang. Um, you got to hurry up because I got to pee again. You know, Damn. I'm not lying. I don't think he would. I don't think he'd ever do it, but but I, I do think Justin Algar is a really solid race car driver. I mean, he's. Uh, I, he's, I've been a teammate to him. Um, you know, again, I'm just real quickly thinking about that. But I spent time with him, you know, as a teammate and, and not as teammates, as a, as, a, as a friend, right? Like, I just think he's really he's a really solid race car driver. And you know, a nice guy. To, and a very he nice guy. He is a good guy. guy. Yeah, for sure. He is a good the, dude. The thing is, like, obviously I joke on here all the time about how Danny's great and yada, yada, yada. And that's obviously – You think? I mean, I've, obviously I like him because he is my boss. But the thing that really strikes me, and to Tyler's point, he is so involved with every – every aspect of the, the company and the biggest thing i take away from it is it never settles like somebody asked him no. i seen an interview this week where somebody asked him about like how great was it to get both 2311 cars in the top 10 of points this year and he's like yeah that was great but now i expect more like yeah. i, I the, we, that's not good enough you know yeah, we kind of messed up like <laughs> they were just going to be happy enough that we both got in the playoffs and we put both cars top 10 in points yeah we like, should have oh, saved man, a year for that we just sped up we just <laughs> We we made a lot more ground on that mountain we were climbing than we thought. But I think that's what's going to make us better is him. Like and he that starts at him. That's the top of the chain, it, just demanding excellence. And like he's uh, he's always said he's got a five year plan to be where he wants to be, and we're in going into year four year now. Yeah. Um, and, and for and it's on track. Like with, with now we have to move forward. Like that was you know that was a great job last year, but that's not good enough next year. Next year I expect both cars to be whatever you know. Um, so I think that's just, that's one of the biggest things I take away from him is just his he strives to be so much better every year and expects he expects himself to be great and he expects all of us to be great at the same time. Yeah, and in, and and on those weekends where we do show up and we are a little bit better or, or faster than than our, you know, our Joe Gibbs racing teammates. Like you would think that that would be good enough for him at times, no. but it's not. Yeah. No, he, he just, you know, every little thing, but, but that's great because as a race car driver, I'm the same way. I mean, I could get out of the car and have a, a fifth place car and finish second or third with it. And I am going to be just absolutely steaming mad that I didn't find a way to win that race. And that's, those are the kind of people you want to have. Yeah. I'm I think sure. it's going to help us having a third car at Daytona this year. Well, I mean, it's, it's especially at plate races. Like, yeah. If, if, we needed it if, last year. We listen, needed it. If, if going into the last lap at Daytona 500 last year, Pastrana, who, like, going into Daytona, he was the biggest sponge I've ever met in my life. He's like, just yeah. tell me what to do. I don't give. I don't know nothing. I don't give a shit. He did a you damn good job. You guys tell me what to do. Yeah. And we had a restart. He was on our bumper, and he's like, just tell Bubba I'm not lifting. Like, I'm going to – whatever it is, I'm following him. And if I, he piles into a wreck, I'm piling in there with him. I don't care. And we were going to come off of turn two at the 500 on the last lap with we had the eight in front of us and Pastrana pushing the shit out of us from behind and Almarola ended yeah. up wrecking Pastrana. Looking him, yeah. And, and, but like the, that, having those extra cars, especially at them plate races, is, could be the world of difference. Well, we, it might be the difference in winning and losing. Position we were in, we're uh, Busher's leading the race, we're second, and Kyle Bush is behind us. He gets run, gets on the outside of us. If we have a third car right there, Brad or whoever Brad and Chris can move at that point to cover, and then when I, when the third car recovers from that, then you got you still got strength. I think up that's there. why this the the, the colleague cars were always so successful at, at the Xfinity stuff is because you had three of them lined up exactly. And <clears> the third car, the, the last guy is kind of hard to block, but if you see the third guy gets covered, you you cover now. Yes. You cover that line and come back and pick him up, whatever it is. But the the more cars you have in line, it's mm -hmm. harder to split that group up. That's exactly why why we run it. I mean, yeah. you want more strength at the end of the race. And you got a good guy. David Reagan's a great well, that, player. Well, he, he'll fit in great with Brad and Chris. I mean, he'll be a worker right there. And David's good at those tracks. So, Well, <laughs> let's move on to the DVC A main where we catch up on all things dirt and I'd like to think that this is the off season for dirt, but I think we have more to talk about than we've ever covered i heard a crazy number the other day oh oh boy i heard your husband's bringing 14 cars to the Tulsa shootout 
Is that true? <laughs> Anyways, um, I I don't I don't I don't think it's fourteen. Do you know how many Rolexes you can get for fourteen? <laughs> I mean, I don't know how like because you you run multiple cars uh, cars in multiple classes, so I don't know. But I heard it, I heard some crazy. He has or, he has. A good number of cars going to shoot out. No idea. You just broke no I- <laughs> Don't tell Chad I told you. <laughs> no, I do. I, I can't speak for shootout. I think it's actually lower than that, but I hope it's lower than that. But I, even know you I do know uh, it's probably all in there right now. The, <laughs> apparently, we own that too. Um, I do know he has a smaller number for Chili Bowl to be more focused. Six percent. What? Six, 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 <laughs> remember, <laughs> how many Chili Bowl cars can we? T- I have, you know, he hasn't announced. He has cars, not right. announced it yet. Um, I know one of them. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> anyways, um, I'm gonna start things off by saying Millbridge because I didn't know going? Millbridge oh, wow. starts back up on Saturday. So let's take a drink to that. Cheers this weekend. How about, yeah, day um, races. How about uh, Brandon Shepard? I just yes. I, didn't, I, have, oh, I, didn't I saw know that video. It. I saw the I didn't that see the video. Cool. I saw the picture. I saw the video. So he, I saw the video. he tested at Millbridge. There's yeah. been a they lot. They ran a super dirt late model at Millbridge the other day. What? <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, yeah it was pretty, so yeah. it was cool. Um, yes. They're testing. They got that big race in the dome. You could race Is it like this week? Six cars Game, out Gateway. there at once. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you ever been to Millbridge, Brett? No. I haven't either. Yes, so I you have. You're liar. Oh, I went to Mil- I went to Salisbury for a meeting, and I came back, and I took a wrong turn. Have you really I, not been to Millbridge? I've never been to Millbridge. Are I want to you go. kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. What I've never idiot. been to Millbridge. I got to make a the coverage is get so, you VIP the, passes. The coverage is so good that I just don't even need to go. <laughs> you get spoiled if you go there too much. <laughs> yeah. Drinking word to I gotta, the show. It's too late to I got to make a confession. Um, the last time I was there, I think I went out there on a Tuesday night, and me and Bo and Lombardi and his daughter went. And uh, I, I just went to just go watch some racing. I think uh, Randall Burnett's um, son Tatum was racing. A couple other kids were racing. But um, we just kind of went to hang out because Bo likes to go. And um, uh, Larson's, I think Owen was racing. Yeah. And Kyle wasn't there. He was busy doing something else. But uh, Caitlin was there. And I ran into Smiley, I think his name is. And he was like, you know, uh, Audrey's cart's in, in the hauler if you want Bo to go sit in it. And I'm like, oh, my God, I don't think mm. I'm going to do this. But. I eventually walked down there, and Caitlin's like, yeah, throw him in there, get him in the seat. And I think Audrey's a little older than, than Bo, but, I mean, I'm, does, I'm in trouble. Does, like, Alex, does Alexa know this happened? Yeah, I sent her <laughs> pictures and everything, and I think she mm. was having a heart attack. I mean, So did fit, you get him a car yet? Uh, no, but but he fits perfectly in this this car. It's bad. As I Any, was, uh, Tyler's going to need a race. <laughs> I'm in Bo's trouble. going racing. As yeah. I was, no, I'm, yeah, I'm committed for the long term. Well, the funny thing is, it ha- uh, the best, one of the best stories I heard about something like that was um, – Austin Payton, who's a friend of ours, uh, oh, I don't know what yep. his thing is. What's he? Denny's manager. manager. Yeah, right uh, guy. but he does and it with Ty. Ty Gibbs now. Well, Ty Gibbs just dropped off a cart at Austin's house for Austin's little boy. <laughs> He's like, "Oh, this is for him." He's like, "He'll be fine." <laughs> Here and you Austin's go. like, "Great, awesome." So, I mean, <laughs> dude, obviously. We have all come from a lot of different places to get here. When you go to a place like Millbridge, do you realize how hard it is to go from racing the way you grew up racing to making it to where you made it? Um, on the backside, no. But I, I do remember, uh, I think, the, you know, my, my first asphalt race was at Mobile, Alabama. And I was running for Schrader. Oh, God. I, I just remember, like... <laughs> I don't know. The race was so long. I hated the windshield. It was so hot. I was miserable. I'm like, there's no way I can do this. Like, there's no shot. And we went to Salem, and it went a little bit better. Larry Moore was a crew chief. And, um, yeah, I mean, I ran okay, but, like, it was just – I was so lost. And then we went to Rockingham, of all places. Wow. And uh, for the NASCAR K&N Pro Series <clears throat> race, the first NASCAR race, I, I was guess. there. And, I don't know, it just – because it was hot, and I wouldn't say it was hot, right? But the track was slick. The tires wore out. It was like, oh, okay, this makes sense. Is that but, where you but, met Brad? He won. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I met, um, I think, uh, Jeremy Thompson, who, who you know, was was very instrumental there for, for many years, was spotting for, for Moffitt. Yeah. And that was the guy that clear hide himself on me off of two and end up winning the race. So that was pretty That was a big day. race. That was a, there was a, that was a, like a big that. championship battle in that yeah, race. Yeah, Brett lost yeah. championship and Kyle was, Larson I grew up racing. I was spotting people for Corey, I think. Yeah. Because Bubba was driving the Gibbs car. I wasn't spotting for Bubba that day. But these yeah. kids you see running around, I mean, some of them are going to make it to Cup. Yeah, oh yeah. Like, you made it to Cup. It's crazy. Yeah, I know, but like you said, you know, 10, 15 years from now, maybe even longer than that, right, some of these kids that are racing – 
Um, there's certainly, I mean, a good amount of them are going to have the opportunity, right? Surely some of them, a couple of them are going to, you know, find their way into the Cup Series. I thought that was cool uh, during Blaney's uh, speech. He was talking to Harvick about, like, when he was a kid, he would go out on driver intros with his dad and meet Harvick. And now that, now he, he said he almost feels old because Man, yeah. he's at driver intros and here comes Keelan. You know, it's yeah. like, he's like, it's like the roles reversed. And then, like you said, we talked about here, Keelan, like, he drives everything. So eventually – He's going to go wherever he wants, it seems like. Um, but, yeah, he said, I, he's like, I almost feel old now because I remember being, I remember being Keelan, and now I'm the driver he's meeting. He's like, this, I'm, I'm starting to feel old myself. When he said that, all I could think <laughs> of is, you know, all the times that Bo comes to driver intros with me, and I'm just like, oh, my gosh, the money. Who's <laughs> 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 most favorite driver right now? I mean, it was Chase for a very, very long time. Chase is still, like, one of his favorites, but it's been really, um, you know, Maybe maybe it was because I won some races. I know Chase had a lot of things go wrong for him this year, but um, maybe he's just gotten older. He's, is it Dad? I mean, me. It's I, I would say he's got a number one favorite, but like you, he'll always say, um, "Daddy, Bubba, Chase." Okay, and then he'll say Denny, and um, <laughs> yeah, just like I, Freddie. I had to I had to work that one in there, but, but no, he does. It's weird. We have the same list. <laughs> yeah. No Chase. <laughs> no, it, I think what's what's honestly helped is is, is I've you know, been at the team, I've found, you know, some of Kurt's little, you know, 164th die casts or some of mine. And as I've gotten them to him, he's, he's more gravitated more towards me. So you mentioned him. Mm -hmm. How great is Kurt? Like how, oh, like just uh, nobody gets this, like, you know, a lot of people don't get to see the side we get to see. Nah, like, Kurt's the guy, awesome, dude. The guy yeah. is like, Not all around, we, just, like just all around, but like just, we, we, he named himself, I guess. Well, I shouldn't say we named him. He named himself the captain of the fun department over there. And I think he's transferred over. He's transitioned over oh, to oh, chief vision officer. Chief vision officer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's but more no, of a, I mean, you can explain he, that one easier. <laughs> I mean, the, the amount of experience that guy has, the things he's been through, there's, you know, uh, I think in the videos that the NASCARs put out that, that others have mentioned, no one in, in, in our era, if you will, has been through things he's been through and, and been able to, you know, I didn't, I, I wouldn't, I guess in probably his eyes, I wouldn't say he, he went out on top, but I mean, he, you know, was winning races, competing um, for him to go through all the things that he did and, and get back to where he was is really hard. The to amount do. of detail, and it, this started with Kurt. Like, so we, when Kurt came over, we began having, meetings a couple hours before the race every week and it was, it's you know all the it's all the engineers spotters drivers crew chiefs and like the amount of detail he can go into about like you know, like somebody would be like oh you know track tightens up here but kurt will be like listen at the end of this first run at such and such racetrack the car is going to get tight but don't worry about it that's just that's just the nature of this beast don't tight don't don't free the car up because it's it's just that run if you free it up you're going to be way too loose the second run like he could tell you what the car is going to do at one point in the run at what lap at this time of day and you're like holy yeah, shit like, I, I swear he knows what's <laughs> going on more with my car than than I do and he's up there you know looking to SMT or sitting up there with Billy and, and I'm driving it and he knows what's happening more than I do I mean that's just I've tried to get better in that regard and it's taken time I mean, you you probably remember right when I first got in the truck. Like, oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure you pretty much had to tell Doug Randolph what the thing was doing because I just I'm not really sure, right? Like, I'm used. You to... You were very raw. Yeah, like. I mean, you didn't know <laughs> you didn't know anything about asphalt racing, no. but I mean, you I mean, you adapted very quickly though, and I wrecked a lot of stuff along the way. Uh, yeah, but I mean, transmissions. The, <laughs> transmissions, yes. I mean, you were harder <laughs> on transmissions than you were any body panels on the car. <laughs> Yikes. Dirt Vision season doesn't seem to end. Tons more racing, as I mentioned. Millbridge starting off this Saturday at 1 p.m. Um, come hang out with Chloe. And tons more on the schedule between Shootout, Chili Bowl. Uh, more announcements, I'm sure, to come. Um, catch a lot of it on Dirt Vision and stay up to date on our show on Dirt Vision. Well, let's move on to Ask DBC. Don't forget to send in your questions using hashtag AskDBC. Although we won't have a show for a few more weeks, I guess, until February. You can still submit your questions. I'm sure I'm sure Freddie and Brett, while they're nice and sober, will get to them on Twitter, too. Uh, first question is from Carter. What is the worst gift you've ever received? No, no such thing as a bad gift. Yeah. <clears throat> My yep. grandma, oh God. she had a lot of grandkids, and we got a pair of nylon socks every year. God rest her soul. I love her to death. But you knew what you were opening, and it sucked. Claudia, Claudia used that sewing kit she got last <laughs> year. 
I don't know. Do you remember that? <laughs> no. What? Cindy are you doing Christmas at my house this year yeah. again? Cindy gave her like. What are you a, gonna get me? I don't know. I gotta get you. You got me the best gift ever last year. That Dutch oven. That that, that sounds terrible. <laughs> it's actually a Dutch oven. It's. it's Why are you and Brenner <laughs> with the sheets together? <laughs> Hang on a minute. Yeah, you might want to explain this one. <laughs> Where was like this the at? Gift of a this Dutch is oven. F- actually a Dutch oven. Was this in Columbia? I don't was even this in, know. This was we Columbia, just, we wasn't it? Lost, we lost Travis. Uh, anyway, uh, it's, is, does anybody know what a Dutch oven is? I mean, the f- what actually a Dutch oven is? Not Freddy. a no. Yeah. Not please, a, please enlighten us, please. It's a it's a pot. It's a cast iron pot <laughs> that I'm going to use today or tomorrow probably. Uh, but Brett told me for years, he's like, the best thing you can do is make a pot roast with this Dutch oven that I got. And I was like, that's cool. That's, and I've always, we like, we share recipes all the time. And cook, Does it smell good? Cook a lot. It smells <laughs> awesome. It smells like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so last year, Brett, Brett, last year gave me a Dutch oven. <laughs> For Christmas. <laughs> so guess what I'm going to get you this year? What did Dale say that shit was? Pass the cheese? <laughs> what was it? Remember? At the live show? Pass the cheese. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to bring some cheese to Brett's house. for Cup. For Christmas. I, I, I we, didn't, said, we didn't get to do uh, Christmas a uh, couple years yeah. ago because my friend Brett. <laughs> That's a gift you can't return. Man, I, <laughs> you guys are tighter than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. It's a great gift to give family. Yeah, I, it's I a can't gift. top that it's one. It's a gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> <laughs> the second that left my mouth, I was like, "That's a bad idea." <laughs> I think he might have just got me that last year for this reason, for this uh, moment. Like, he's like, "I'm gonna buy." Tyler's here. You need bad presents. <sighs> I mean, I have gotten a few, but like, I don't know who's listening, so I'm not like. I've got some really creative gifts, and I'm just. What like, if they were getting you it again? No, no, there's no way. Oh, well, what I was mean, it got, then? I mean, like, <laughs> I, there's so many options here. It's yeah, kind of, I, I mean, don't, I don't even know where to start. Electron, <laughs> are we talking electronics? <laughs> oh, TJ, what about I, you? I just can't. I, I'm, I, I'm scared to say. Gift I don't card. know. Yeah, I don't, yeah. For sure. <laughs> you can't be, can't be the worst gift if you never got it. So, um, yeah, that was pretty bad. Um, I actually, I know Blake said he doesn't like gift cards, but I like, I, I don't mind gift cards. I mean, I, I know it's, uh, Dale, are you listening? Well, yeah, but he, if he actually goes and buys the damn gift card, it's a different story. So I don't know. Normally, um, is there, a, is there a member of your family that always gets you the same thing every year? My grandmother gets, sends me a check for $25 every year for a my birthday. Check? Check every year for my. It's either my. Do you even or cash it? No, I, I have. Yeah, I've stopped well, cashing them. I've, yeah. I, I, I kind of save them now for, for I'm gonna probably put them somewhere like frame yeah. or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, I, I don't think I haven't cashed one in a long time. I think um, one of my relatives gets me literally like socks every year, and I think I have like three packages of unopened socks, and they're socks that I may never wear my entire <laughs> life. Um, and I don't even think. Anybody wears these type of socks. So, um, you got the, like the white ones with the blue. No and way. At the top no, I wear them. them. <laughs> oh. All right, listen, I gotta run. But before I run, Casey, I love you. Andrew, you've done an okay job what this idiot? year. No one idiot. Uh, no one idiot for me. I'll let you guys handle that. Tyler, thanks for coming. Always good to see. you. Thanks for bringing the bruise. Uh, I wish everybody listening a Merry Christmas. We couldn't do this show without you, fans. Thanks to all the guests who come on. Uh, probably except for Joel. <laughs> I don't know if we should thank Joel or not. I think we should thank Joel. That was actually pretty good. That was pretty Uh, good. Listen, I love Joel. He and I were literally, we were talking on the phone. We hung up and he he tweets that thing of this pen. I'm like, we were just talking about what you're going to do. I was worried that was going to cost me money. I thought Uh, we signed him to Couch Racer or something. But uh, but a lot of support goes into this show. A lot of guys and gals go in and do this thing. And uh, Mike Davis, their brainchild. And all the sponsors, all the ad reads, we love you guys. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Tyler, uh, we'll see you next year. Oh, yeah. All right, good. See you guys. I'm out. All right. Bye, Brett. What else is new? Brett's leaving early, not yeah. showing. Hey, you got to pee again? You, oh, get one. you better pee before, before you leave. Like, I want to get one out before you Yeah. Go. I'll see you in a little bit. Do you have a wooden idiot? Oh, yeah. Oh. I told you, the one from uh, Florence. Oh, the kid. Ryan Glinsky. Oh, the. <laughs> this was my wooden idiot of a lifetime. 
I think, because I'm watching this race of Florence, and it's it's it was a quick race. I think it only took what six seven hours yeah. to run 300 laps. I actually sprints. thought the race was pretty good. Um, a lot but, of wrecks. I mean, there's a guy that went through a fence, and they were <laughs> the funniest. This race, I was making notes. I'm like, holy, shit, we're gonna talk about this race forever on DBC because like yeah. a guy went through a fence, and then Blake, who works here for us, and uh, Eric Brennan are announcing, and they're talking about they're, they backed the tow truck up to this guy. Now he, Florence doesn't have walls for anybody that's never seen the place, so he hangs a throttle or jumps over a guy, drives over to first turn banking down the hill through a fence. So he's probably what Blake, uh, I don't know, quarter mile off the racetrack, if that you'd say. So, so they're hooking a tow truck up to this guy, and he's okay. Obviously, he's out. And next thing you know, I hear the the announcer's like, "And the pace car's off." And they're, they're still hooking this guy up to the tow truck, and here they come off a of four, taking the green. And I'm like, "Okay, I guess." They I didn't see this part. So yeah, so they're they're just dragging this guy off the track. <laughs> so then, um, what's a quarter mile off track? Then, you uh, said? then somebody went Quinn Huff and pit, pitted from the the top lane to the bottom and almost wiped the leaders out. You mean a Redding? Yeah. Well, no. Like you didn't you didn't do what this guy did. This guy just hung a left and like wiped out everybody <laughs> underneath him. Um, but my man Ryan Glensky, who I feel bad now, I call him an idiot now, but he because I think he's since apologized or maybe got some bad information. But he early in the run, Florence is notoriously bad on tires. Like it's, it's choose them up, choose them up. Mm-hmm. And most guys kind of run part throttle, fifty percent, whatever, take care of their stuff. Well, Clark Houston, Andy Houston's son, decided. <laughs> that i'm out and he took off and he had seven eight second lead at a probably i don't know what the lap time they run there but he's gone he's on the other side of the racetrack and glensky who's very good driver he's very good at at florence especially has backed himself up to the guys running second and third which were the kid that won uh zilich and i forget who the other guy was and he, he is just maintaining pace with them but he's a lap down because clark is on the other side of the racetrack so yellow comes out he cycles back around to the back, doesn't get the lucky dog because Clark had lapped half the field at that point. Mm. So he cycles back around. Now, later in the race, he's at no point now, all these cautions come out, but there's a bunch of guys laps down or whatever. He's not getting it back. He's not getting lucky dog. He's not getting a lucky dog. And they're making a – Blake and Eric are making a point on the broadcast to say, like, sucks for Ryan. He's stuck a lap down still. He hasn't been able to get in position for the lucky dog. So then he has a run where it's a longer run. He drives up to, like, fourth or fifth in line fast, you know. And there's another caution. Well, he's fourth or fifth in line, and now it's like take, I'm, I'm watching at home, and it's taking forever. We're running 10, 12 parade laps, and I'm like, what's this guy? Like, what's going on? And they're like, uh, Ryan Glinsky won't get out of his position. Like, he says he's fourth, and he's obviously a lap down. He doesn't realize he never got the lucky dog. He must have thought he got it somewhere, and he didn't. And I'm like, this guy, I mean, he's ruining the race now. Like, we're, like, we're making parade laps. Now there's an f- official comes on front stretch. He kind of swerves at this guy. He's got his hand out the window flipping off the tower because he, you know, he, he he's knows. sure. He, yeah, he is just so sure that he's on the lead lap. And I'm like, this is incredible. Like, it's, so but he, he never got the his, lucky dog. His never, <clears throat> never got the lucky dog. So his, fan, his family's on pit road or his crew, whoever, is they're flipping off the tower. They're yelling at officials. Finally, he comes, makes a hard left down pit road, almost cleans out like three or four people at the end of pit road, running way too fast on a, on a live pit road, gets out, double bird to the tower, yelling at officials. And I'm like, this guy doesn't know. Like, he must have, I'm like, who screwed up here? The, the tower or him? Somebody has screwed up royally. Yeah. Here. Somebody's an idiot. I'm thinking, I tweeted during that. I'm like, whoever is wrong in this situation is going to be my one idiot on DBC. So finally, I forget who, if it was Caitlin or somebody that was the, um, not Caitlin, uh, Jacqueline. But, yeah, uh, Jacqueline. The, the infield reporter finally catches up with him, and he's like, this stupid tower, I never even got lapped. I kept them guys behind me the whole time. Because he thought that nobody told him Clark was leading. Oh, <laughs> so he was. So he ran this whole race thinking he's on the lead lap, and then he got up there. But nobody, he was a half a lap down. Like, he was already down a lap and a half probably because Clark, nobody told him Clark, he had no idea who the leader was. So he As made he, a complete ass of himself. That's pretty bad. When he was a lap down the whole time. And I'm like, this has got to be one idiot of a lifetime, which Who's I don't know if you give it to. Eventually, I found out it was, what was this, his mom, Blake? His mom spots for him. And she took blame. She's like, I just lost track of the leader. Yeah. I thought, and it, the, the guys that he was holding off were the, the, the I mean, I'm not going to lie. When you go to Florence at a place like that, you have to know who the leader is because you have cars that do that. They yeah, take off and run. start taking off. You have got to know who that guy is. And that, But for him to – I mean, he made a complete ass of himself and then was a 1,000% wrong at the same – like, he was 
race town eight cost me a win. That's like he just like he went off that they were so wrong and he knew everything. Oh, and I'm like, oh, good. this poor guy. Like, and then it would come out later. I'm like, he that's that's uh, unfortunately. I think you're a very talented so race I was car watching that, in. but I had family over so at my parents' him. house and I couldn't hear. I remember them talking about that guy a lot. And I didn't know what was really going on, so yeah. that explains it all. That, now. Yeah, it was it was it was a really bad look, and I think he's a really talented race car driver, and I'm sure he regrets every minute of it now. But I'm sorry at that moment, in yeah, life, you were you were one idiot for sure. You got an idiot for the year? I mean, what you oh, I mean, just every official in that Philadelphia Eagles and Buffalo Bills game. <laughs> that was <laughs> the the end of the. I thought the end of the let's let's go straight football now. Packers. Oh, it's so was bad. so bad. It, it was, was so like bad. Four direct calls in a row. That how, how can Mahomes get hit when he's in bounds and right on the line and trying to go forward, and you call that a personal foul? But, uh, you know, I'm not even mad at the horse missed horse collar tackle or whatever. The fact that you throw an intentional grounding penalty on top of that when there's a receiver five yards from him where the ball – somebody took a picture of it. when TJ gets – he tweets – about I football. tweeted twice. Football. I was so he, mad he at that two, point. He had two tweets like in a day. Which yeah, is a lot. You it know, is a lot. I was. Okay? And I know. <laughs> I know officials are gonna. Met, look, man, nobody's perfect. I mean, nobody's perfect, and I get Except that. Except for Brett. Oh yeah, but he's not here. So yeah, Brett does <laughs> think he's, he's perfect. perfect. <laughs> but I mean, when you when you he's miss a horse collar tackle, fine. Even though it was completely obvious that the guy had a hold of him, and it wasn't. I don't think he swung him down by it that hard. So I wasn't mad at that. I was more mad that you threw on a penalty that you just made up when they took a picture on Twitter. And you call the ball literally landed 1.9 yards from the receiver. It went by him. To me, that's in the area of the receiver. So when those quarterbacks nope. throw the ball to the grandstands, how is that okay? You know what I mean? Or well, screen pass is you messed up. You got an idiot? You want to call anybody? Idiot? Uh, anybody you tweeted about recently, maybe or something? Like that? Uh, yeah. Did you tweet about somebody? <laughs> There's that, but <laughs> I'll go uh, look. He, he yeah. caused another hell of a wreck. We're, I'm talking oh, about no. He caused a hell of a wreck at the snowball again. I missed that. Like, oh, last chance Carson race. Did? Yeah, he last chance race. He's oh, side I by side this. with, yes. I think, Augie. Yeah. Running, I don't even know. Like, they're loose. both in the race. Gets loose, chases it up. Well, when he gets loose, he chases up into him, which is already, like you're already overstepping because you're both in the race at that point. And then, like, Sammy gets underneath him, and he just kind of hangs a hard yeah, left. Yeah, but I will say this, and I've been in that situation. Uh, this situation, I was the guy in the bottom one time at South Boston. Peyton Sellers got loose in the outside. And when those guys catch it at a short trail, they come down the track. He's not, like, Peyton yeah, wasn't trying. Was a pretty abrupt left turn with the guy underneath him. I'm there. just saying, you come back. Like, when you're loose and you chase it up a little bit, you don't even think real quick. You're back down the track before guess, you even. Guess who doesn't ever get the benefit of the doubt anymore? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm not saying he doesn't. <laughs> but I'll tell you the disappointing part of me of that is the way that, that um, you know, honestly, that Sammy reacted to that. Maybe they wreck. And <laughs> Sammy didn't seem like he was had any interest in continuing nope, I'm on saying that. I'm <laughs> saying he lets that, you know, he doesn't get in there and they carry on. Those two guys wreck in front of him. He benefits from it. But instead, he just said, I'm done with this and I'm plowing into the guy, and which was kind of disappointing yeah. because I thought Sammy was a uh, – I thought he was fast enough if something did happen. You know, obviously, they're the best qualifying and stuff, but – I can to say that when people get loose like that, they come down the track a little bit. Like I know Peyton didn't hang a left. I know he was out of control. And, and the the one thing that sh- and you could talk about this as a driver, especially you know, uh, the end of that race, Majeski is leading. Nasty gets underneath them. Majeski kind of just gives him room. It is what yeah. it is. He's better mm-hmm. than me. Let's him go on. Yep. F- fast forward a handful of laps later. Here comes Bubba. Bubba runs Nassie down, kind of puts the bumper to him a little bit off four, gets underneath him, and Nassie just runs him in the inside wall and, and yeah. ruins both of their days. I mean, he didn't like – it wasn't dirty, malicious, but he didn't give him any room, kind of squeeze him in the wall, and that's how you end up. And now the guy that was smart enough to just, all right, today's not my day, he inherits the wins lead the race. wins the race. You know, yeah. so it's – t- I see I'm, I'm, with somebody that tweeted that, and it's like it's just a perfect synopsis of the, the, the amount of times you try to squeeze a guy down or hold him down, you're going to wreck – at least 50-50. Well, especially more right there. That. Those guys get close to that I, wall. I, I don't have a lot of asphalt light model experience, really. But um, when I ran that uh, race at Lee Speedway a while back last year, I was completely surprised by how tight, how much tighter you can run a late model car. But, I mean, you are going slower. It is a little bit different, right? Like, you know, when I was running the bottom at that race, like, people are right there on your right front. You're like, oh, my gosh, I'm making you think about it. And I'm like, oh, I can use this to my advantage. So it is a little bit different. I can't really speak on it that well, but you know, I think when you're running at higher speeds, you just know to give yourself a little but bit. But that more was, I, I, and I don't remember who you were racing that night. You might, but uh, that was a perfect example of like kind of how to do it. Like you guys ran side by side for the last 
portion of that run and finished. I mean, it didn't work out good for you, but no, I messed that uh, up. But <laughs> you should you should have <laughs> dirtied him up a little bit, maybe. But you know, it's like you guys ran side by side and, and ran through the line yeah, like, like that. that worked, you know? But I, I I was more talking about just like throughout oh, I know, the race. How, I was how learning. Tight I was they like, can, oh, okay. You know, you just run a lot tighter than you would think. And I mean, Nasty um, said it in his interview, though. He said he was either going to win or wreck himself. But I think he pinched him I don't a little have a bit lot of too experience much. Experience with it, but I. I did make that connection to, okay, when you're the outside car, you can be way more aggressive mm -hmm. than in a stock car uh, at holding the guy underneath you down. It will sometimes work to your advantage way Big more than it would tracks. in a stock yeah, car. I agree. So that was that was surprising, and, and vice versa. Like, if you're on the bottom, like, if you're on the bottom of somebody, you you know, you try to position yourself and use them up a little bit more. It's I mean, the you're not going to get connected and take off and go sliding up into the wall because you're not, you know, you're going yeah. a lot slower. You're not going 150 miles an hour. If you're on the inside, it's all where the right front tire is. If you're on the outside, it's all where the left front tire is. If it's in front of the other guy, you can pinch him down. If the other guy gets positioned, he can run you up, it and it's a battle like, for it that. It just seems like they, the, the amount of times you see somebody try to hold somebody down like that, it ju you get wrecked. You're just, it, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I guess it kind of depends on the racetrack, but like late the, at the end of the race, I feel like if you're on the outside, you're kind of delaying the... I mean, inevitable? I don't, I don't, I'm, not short, I'm not a short track asphalt guy, but I would think in a race like that, you're kind of delaying the inevitable, right? You like are. You, you're better off to... You know, let him go well, like, get in line and try and just move him up and put yourself in a get a restart. Was that was eventually for the win right there. I mean, I, I think he knows if, if Bubba gets around him, it's over at that point. But I mean, not but it was for the win when it was for the win when Nassie passed Ty. You know, Ty, yeah. didn't, Ty didn't squeeze him down into the wall. Ty and, just said, "I'm beat at this point." And know? I go to Southern National, watched you guys swap the lead six, seven times, or no, more than that, probably. I don't yeah. know. They swapped the lead twice a lap for like five, six laps straight. So it can be done, but it just to me, it was unnecessary at that point. But Kind of ruined a good race. Well, I would say mine is uh, myself <laughs> in Nashville for two reasons. Oh, no. Uh, first reason. Did you blow Nashville, motor? Uh, no, I actually didn't. Party? I just, just had too much fun <laughs> on Wednesday night. I was all but convinced at, like, I don't know, 1230 that I had, you know, I had a couple more in me, right? I got one more in me, is, uh, as they would say. And, no, um, I've seen Alexa that. shut me down, and that was that was the right call. So f shame on me for thinking I had I had more left. <laughs> um, and then shame on me a second time the following night, Thursday night, because as soon as the awards were over, I was over it. I was just I was ready to go get in bed. So I left. I got in bed, and I proceeded to miss probably one of the uh, probably most ridiculous after uh, dance parties. Yeah. Yes, I was Casey with Alexa. Yeah, this. me and Alexa had what, a blast. What oh my gosh, where do I even start? I mean, by all means. I mean, I missed it, right? But I just I get videos. I I, I just if I would have been there, I probably would have been on the stage. Like I agree. Like, Most parties. of them. Well, so Flo NASCAR Rider brought oh, Flow Rider. Yeah, yeah. That, that was everyone on stage. Dancing yes. Oh yes. my gosh. I have a whole I, new I missed out on a, a full blown fantastic entertainment. I just. I don't I know. I, I should have went there. to bed. I, I could see you up there with your shirt off, running around behind Flow Rider. I could see no. that. Well, well I've been see, down there videotaping the whole thing, laughing. I missed out. You know, I now, got a couple clips some, from uh, Alexa, but I, I completely missed. Oh, out. it was awesome. Now that now you got a goal, if you win an extra, you can be up there. Oh yeah, that that. <gasps> yeah. He doesn't even have to win. I mean, just if go. you win next year, I'm going. <laughs> just saying. So. <laughs> <laughs> go stay for a week. Uh, but and no yeah. going out Wednesday night. You're staying in. Well, you know, I. Set myself up for failure. I, I think we we're talking about it earlier. You know, you have all these uh, these parties or these these get-togethers. You know, we had uh, a, a different. We had like three or four of them, and you know, it's open bar, and they're walking around, food and whatnot. And you're just like, I don't need any food. You know, I'm gonna save room for the important stuff. Yeah, I'm good. And yeah, that, that worked out great. <laughs> I just did a vacation like that, so yeah. It was, no, it was, well, yeah. I actually, when I was in St. Thomas, I didn't do that. I I ate everything in sight and drank everything in sight. When I got home, I gained seven pounds. I was like. Okay, well, that was Dang. bad. I seven. lost. In like I, a week, like five days, I gained I lost, seven pounds. I lost seven pounds on this trip, just so you know. I mean, I got it. <laughs> you guys even down. For, for those wondering, I got it all back. I just stopped eating and started yeah. It's probably a lot easier for me to lose weight than you to gain weight, though, so I'm saying. Well, I mean, I, the first couple come off pretty easy. <laughs> I can you know, probably lose five walking the, out to my truck right flushing now. Flushing everything out. <laughs> you also have a, a wedding we to plan, no so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you also have a wedding to plan, so uh, um, Alexa will probably be proud to know that you lost it back, lost it again. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I got some work to do in the off season. I'm looking forward to it. Herm, you know Herm. Yeah. The best advice Herm ever gave me before my wedding, I'll give it to you. Don't get skinny for your wedding because you're going to have a thousand wedding pictures. Casey can attest to this. A thousand wedding pictures around your house, and eventually you're going to get fat again. And then you're gonna have to look at yourself skinny all over your house <laughs> forever. Well, <laughs> I, I mean, so I know it's gonna sound crazy, but like Herm's I not think, even married. I think I'm like 150 right now, but um, 
<laughs> I think in 2021, 20, I got down to like 135. And we have, you know, just those devices all over the house that have the screens and the pictures, our TVs, whatever. So I'll see pictures pull up when Bo was very, very little. And I mean, I'm like, like just ty- like absolute skin and skin bone. bones. Yes. And I'm like, dang. I, I mean, that. I don't look. That like, was like you were high, you were high training to get into the next gen car, right? Like, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. to lose all my my fat, and then I just cooked <laughs> just myself when I got it. in it. Yeah. But then, Maybe you do an but Iron then Man. I, get, I, I feel good when I see like all the old pictures when I was like a buck sixty five, one seventy. I was like, oh my god, I don't even know who that is. My, my Bo would be like, who's that? And I'm like, that, that, that was that was actually your dad. <laughs> yeah, so that was Hearn's advice, because I was like leading up to my wedding, I was like, yeah, I got to lose some weight. And he's like, don't do that. He's like, then you're gonna look at skinny pictures of yourself forever, and you're gonna be fat again. So what does Hearn look at? Well, he was just telling me that he was right. I mean, that's I've got skinny pictures. He of my ain't house even married. Fine. Yeah, but he knows. <laughs> Wait, you're getting wedding advice from someone who wasn't yeah. married. Yeah, well, he was right. Well, I you mean, know what? You need to ask Herm what Earl told him one time. Oh, I know. Mm. Herm, you got you got you a full body mirror. mirror yes. Yeah. <laughs> Earl, Earl Barbin? Barbin. Earl Barbin oh <laughs> says to me and Herm one day. I had just gotten married. <laughs> and Earl had Earl had actually just gotten married too. I think. Yeah, he did. And uh, Earl said, "Earl's a, uh, he's a bigger guy." And uh, he said, Herm, he said, Herm, you got a full length mirror at your house. We'll end on this story. We got to get the hell out of here. Uh, he said, Herm, you got a full length mirror at your house. And Herm said, no. And we've been giving Herm shit forever because him and his girlfriend, Kelly, yeah, been have together. been together for, I don't know, 47 years. Yeah. Um, and he said, you know how I decided to get married, Herm? And <laughs> Herm said, no. He said, I got out of the shower one day, walked by that full length mirror in my bedroom. I kind of just bounced up and down a little bit and said, yeah, this is the best I'm going to do. I better marry this one. <laughs> he says, so maybe you need a full leg mirror at your house. Well, maybe Chloe needs to come to the studio next time because I just found out she's at Costco and she thought a, a guy was Santa. Um, oh. Bigger, bigger guy oh. with the beard. Say, so, Freddie. I thought you sent her a picture yes. of Freddie. I, you sent her a picture of <laughs> I don't know what happened. Yeah. Freddy. She want to sit on Freddie's lap? <laughs> I'll come be your elf on the <laughs> shelf. You got any shelves that'll hold me up over there? <laughs> <laughs> Freddie's sitting on the counter. Wake Mommy, up. what's that? Wake up, wake <laughs> That's Freddie on the counter. <laughs> Although like, on Christmas, she was looking at a picture of Brett and Freddie from like way back in oh, the day that was on my me. phone. And she goes, Dada. And I'm like, what? <laughs> in- <laughs> what? <laughs> I said, which one is she talking to? Yeah, I don't, oh, I don't want boy. to know. Okay. Yeah. All right, anyway, uh, as we said earlier, thank you all for listening. Thank you to the great guests that we've had all year. Thank you, Tyler, for coming back and being our favorite Christmas guest we've ever had because you're the only one we've ever had. Um, thank, thank you to all of our support. I mean, between thank you all. Sponsors. Dirty Mo, obviously Mike Davis for continuing to keep us around. Bojangles, uh, Dirt Vision. We've got a lot. We've had a lot yep. all year. Yeah, I'm working on uh, getting paid with uh, getting us all paid next year with gift cards. So you guys know I'm working <laughs> yeah. on that. Thanks. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Colby. Thank you, Blake. Yep. Travis, go f- yourself. You're on the wrong yeah. show. The guy that uh, left. Thank you, Travis, Dale. Travis, what did he do? He's just been drinking. <laughs> I, I said, all day. Yeah. he doesn't know anything. Support. What about the guy uh, that left? We Brandon. Can, yeah, thank you, Brandon. F him too. F you, Brandon. <laughs> what? Oh, oh well. Oh yeah. Your host is great. I don't know. Yeah, what Travis, <laughs> Travis is your boss. No, that's not happening. <laughs> uh, but yo, know, thank you, uh, everybody. Abby was here this year earlier in the year. Ben, oh, yeah. ben, ben. Walton, uh, Dalton from the social media side. Just everybody yeah. that helps us. Dirty Mo, Tiff. Thank yeah. God for Tiff. Oh, uh, what would we do without you, it? Micah, thank yeah. you for the Dirty Mo Dustin, lawyers. Dustin, I feel like. Um, I mean, they work overtime. Yeah. They work overtime. <laughs> thank you. Got that right. <laughs> F you, Jason Schultz. I mean. Uh, the live shows. Everybody that came out to the live shows was yeah. amazing this year. This whole year was amazing. And hopefully with Mike kind of, you know, obviously Mike's not going to be on the download anymore. He's going to kind of be more of an, he's going to oversee all of us, which is, I don't know. Um, but hopefully that just takes us to the next level next year. So uh, maybe he's our level. first guest. Listen to next level while you're at it. Uh, <laughs> maybe he's our first guest of the season. Dude, I got an idea. Oh god, sorry mm-hmm. to extend this. Did you see the guy that worked for the Jaguars? The d- no. He got arrested. He uh, oh. stole twenty two million dollars with like using like gift. Card. Was it like it's like store cards? I think we or- could. Shh. Oh, good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty-two million dollars before they caught him. Do <laughs> you think yeah, he had a good? Fun. All right. So yeah, if you don't see me, <laughs> TJ, uh, want to thank anybody before we get to? I mean, I don't want to repeat everything, but everybody that Freddie mentioned and Brett and 
everybody that pieces it together and mostly all the fans that listen, there's not a weekend we don't go to the racetrack where we don't get stopped and say everybody, you know, I went to an event last night in Mooresville, and the first thing somebody said to me was, I love the podcast. And uh, they didn't like Brett, unfortunately. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was I, like, you're in the same club as everyone evil. else. I meant yeah. to read some. Do we want to read reviews? I, I saved yeah, a couple of reviews. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Sure. So there's, uh, there's a couple. But I have, let's see. One of the ones I liked was, oh, hold on. This is the later one. Are you doing Apple? Oh, uh, yeah. Apple, Apple yeah. podcast reviews. Funny, controversial, clean. Oh, sorry. This is from Carmen Scott from March. Funny, controversial, clean, not so clean. One of the best sports podcasts on the waves. They, uh, they good on each other and others. I'm assuming that means get. They bring truth and perspective you won't get anywhere else. Listen every week, and we'll have you waiting for next week's episode. That's not even scratching the surface. Their guest appearance was top notch. Tyler, that's you. Thank you. Uh, NASCAR <laughs> listens, and you should too. That's, I thought that the end of that was pretty good. There was one. <laughs> I had a couple bad ones too. I had to save because you know there was a Reddit thread about how I was a bad producer. Well, you're terrible. Yeah. Oh, that's I mean, better than Brett's Reddit thread. Great Brett has a lot of great Reddit, great Reddit, Reddit, Reddit threads. Uh, this, this used to be a really good podcast. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> now it's just a bunch of adolescents boy, adolescent boys with childish jokes, laughing at each other. All Monday morning quarterbacks are freak and are frequently inaccurate. Kiss my ass, Bill Mack. That's me saying <laughs> that Bill Mack was the uh, guy. Uh, let's see what else we have. Mack and Alley might be him. <laughs> No, no, what are you doing? What are you, what are you pulling up, Tyler? Uh, I was trying to pull up your uh, your Reddit thread. Oh, I I have service. oh, yeah. I have one that I need to be fired, too. So well, everybody, well. I mean, trust me. We've all been fired on Reddit multiple times. Uh, thank you. You guys are so funny, interesting, and speak your mind. I love that, to be honest. I'm tired of listening to the drivers whine. Tyler, stop whining. Uh, <laughs> crash each other and act like spoiled children. There are no big personalities. We need that. Thank you. Great job. That's from Sue B. <clears throat> <laughs> Sometimes these guys act like junior high school kids. Then Brett talks over everybody because he knows everything. The young lady, <laughs> I'm assuming Casey, tries to keep it on track, but Freddie, they spelled my name wrong, and Brett just can't help themselves with stupid talk. <laughs> How about talk about NASCAR and leave comedy to comedians? TJ seems uh-huh. to be the, here's where this, here's the, the most funny part about this thing. TJ seems to be the only grown up. Right. Uh, <laughs> do better, guys. And I look forward to your insight about NASCAR and other stuff. Slick meat, really? <laughs> like, this guy wasn't about like Wait, he must have been listening to his Wait, was their username is uh, No, the username is, it says Brooks T, but I think oh. it's supposed to be Bruce T. Maybe grades, uh, really? Slick meat? I may have given too much credit with junior high. Maybe grade school just keeps getting worse and worse. Yeah. The last episode, I couldn't even get past the drunken intro. You must not like any of those things. <laughs> Can't believe you support a bunch of drunks with this podcast. <laughs> Try to be a little more professional. Eh, that's not going to happen. Tyler, I found that Reddit. You did? Yeah, okay, let's hit a couple job. of them. I have, so, I have... yeah, yeah, Andrew dot 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 isn't the best producer. Clyde said, Andrew's voice sounds like nails on chalkboard. <laughs> <laughs> Someone responded to that and said, say it louder. Dude acts so damn clueless, especially on DBC. <laughs> um, that's pretty funny. We should and have then, done a whole and tweet then to, of that, to that, I replied, I could not agree more. I think I, I, think I like that. I think keep I going. Appreciate that. Yeah. What else we got? Yeah, keep going. I think the rest of mine are good, but keep going on Reddit. I mean, there's. I mean, I, there's. It was a screenshot from the Reddit oh, thread, so I'll have to go back. So the Reddit threads are my favorite I've, because I they. I'll tell you what the Reddit tweets, people so. really like. Brett. Brett. Oh my god. <laughs> Listen, after. I'm not gonna one road course ran in the middle of the summer or whatever. That after that thread uh, or after that race, there was I, it was highly entertaining. Um, I love it. I uh, comment on them all the time because then they're like, I like to comment, and they go, "DBC just sucks now." And I yeah. go, well, "What? What are we doing different? <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> like we're still drunken idiots <laughs> and have the same opinion. Brett's always been an a. I don't know why this is news to anybody. Like, <laughs> why are you surprised at his opinions? I don't know about you guys. I find the mean tweets so amusing. Oh, Just I love like them. the fact that the, you can the, rattle someone. The like funny that. thing is, I, what I always do, and people like uh, Ryan Priest called me one day because I forget something happened. Maybe the Bristol dirt race when him and Larson got into it, and people were just piling on, and they just they say stuff that is so inaccurate <laughs> and so outlandish that you're like, he's like, that's not even true, and I go, I, that's what they want. They want you to <laughs> respond, like they want you to say you're so dumb or something like that. Yeah. But I said, I just like them all. Yeah. Dude. Like yeah, I just yeah, go through yeah, like, yeah. Freddie's the biggest dumbass I've ever seen. Like, I, I, <laughs> I, I, never. I think I did that. Um, I can't remember what it was, but Joel tweeted something about me. Oh Einstein. yeah. Oh yeah. Give you guys a had like. a, get him a like. <laughs> he him loved a like. you and you and Nick. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> that in Bristol, I was walking in across the track there and Priest oh. was signing autographs and somebody's like, Freddie sucks. And I just looked over at Priest <laughs> and he's laughing and grinning and stuff. Uh, it was pretty funny. You had, yeah. In the moment, it was funny. But yeah, you and I, you had a nice little yeah. interaction well, there on Twitter. More? Yeah. Well, I have one from a few years ago and it's oh. a comment on my own YouTube page and it says, I just want to punch that kid in the mouth. I don't know why. But <laughs> honestly, it could be about Jimmy Johnson. We don't know. Yeah, uh, probably not. Jimmy's it's probably you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's probably, <laughs> probably anyway, not about Jimmy. We love all of you. We love you yeah. if you hate us. We love you if you love us. And we thank you for listening. That's what I, that's my that's my always go to. It's usually on Facebook because the people on Facebook are a little bit more. They'll say like, this is the dumbest shit I've ever listened to. And yeah. I just go, thanks for listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Appreciate you're still you. listening. You're yeah. still listening. So yeah. to all of you, haters and lovers, thank you for listening. And we will be back in February. Yep. Merry Appreciate Christmas it. Have a good off season. Happy Merry off Christmas. Season. Merry Christmas. Oh, uh, Brett would say, holla. Holla.